What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Bangkok Strange. I am Dana Blue, and as always, joined by my co-host, Mike Somerville. Greetings and aloha. My man. What's happening, my friend? Not much, man. So, guys, before we get into it, do not forget to subscribe to the to the Bangkok Strange podcast, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, uh, Amazon Podcasts, anywhere you get podcasts, and definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel where we do our live streams the day after the episode drops, and we also do some vlog-type stuff that we're working on. That will be coming out soon, so a lot more content will be available on the uh, YouTube channel, and of course the podcast will always be the podcast. Absolutely, yeah. We're looking forward to it. We've, we've just been doing some great pro- programs, some great topics, yep. and uh, but you know, like we were saying the other day, you know, what, what the hell does strange really mean? Yeah. Like we say, oh yeah, it's Bangkok strange, and of course people are like, well, what's, what's so strange about you know, Bangkok. Everything. So that was the thing. <laughs> I mean, again, if you guys don't know, the way that we define Bangkok is the best city in the world in the whole fucking world and hands so down. hands down and uh some of the greatest pe- well i was gonna say some of the greatest pizza <laughs> yeah the greatest the, you'll pizza. say the greatest pizza which is pala by the way yeah. underneath uh basically the sukhumvit line of yeah also this yeah also slash sukhumvit where you go down the escalator right yeah. there by the dunkin donuts best pizza on the planet and uh but we were talking about okay so yeah it's we, we say strange but what, what does strange really mean yeah it's a strange bangkok strange is not a bad thing right the strange exactly, is, yeah. it's a positive thing to us right it's not bangkok shitty it's yeah. not bangkok screwed up it's mm-hmm. bangkok strange because strange is really what makes it so freaking spectacular yeah. globally is it, because it's different strange is beautiful exactly right and and strange is is the interesting things in life and you know you don't get like i grew up in Pawtucket, rhode island it, it's that would be Pawtucket shitty right it's not Pawtucket strange Pawtucket vanilla Pawtucket yeah. boring yeah exactly arguably, yeah and you're, you're from uh from massachusetts yeah very much the same thing it, yeah i mean in other words it's like well what's, what's different in boston over the last 350 years it's, not a goddamn lot <laughs> there's a lot more potholes yeah <laughs> they haven't patched the streets until they were brand new all the all those uh cobblestones that paul revere hucked all over the place yeah when his horse was shitting all over the street same, he's like same. he's like ah give me some of these friggin lanterns i can't focus dude you just yeah. set some just set fire to one of these damn British boats. They're all wood. They'll sink real quick. Oh, no, I got to let everybody know. Anyway, yeah. all history aside. <laughs> so Bangkok strange. So what what makes it strange? And there, there are so many things. And where we just want to talk about in this episode, what is strange and, and why is it such a good thing? I think for me, probably the first thing that I noticed and the way that I describe it coming to Bangkok for the first time is it is old meets new. Yeah. But it's not like old, antiquated, ridiculous, useless anymore. Mm. It is the the, the Thai tradition of the way that their culture is, but also just the regular normal behaviors that you could definitely label as potentially strange, potentially something you dislike. Yeah. The way, way I'll give you a great example. You're walking down the street. There's a hole in the street. And... From the Thai perspective, it's like, yeah, there's a hole in the street. Yeah. Don't walk into the goddamn street. And how many buddies have you been walking, you know, from the West, or let's yeah. say for the sake of argument, Mary, oh my God, they need to cover that up. Somebody's going to sue them for that. Yeah. I say, yeah, there's something to be said for personal accountability, dude. Yeah. How about this? Don't get shit faced. Don't walk into the goddamn hole. Indeed. You know, and so I think that, you know, if you're guys like you and me, yeah. you appreciate that stuff. Mm. So it may be labeled as strange, but it's like, no, that's freaking cool. Yeah. You know, I mean, I really like that part about it. And uh, and then to the new, you're walking past, you're walking down the sidewalk, you walk past this hole yep. that you know presumably should have documentation all over it, right? And then you walk into a mall where you can buy a Jaguar, a Porsche, and a McLaren on the sixth floor, yeah, <laughs> or have amazing food at a food court for four dollars yep. on the seventh floor. Go sit in a movie theater in a couch that is about an hour and a half old, yeah, with your loved one. For for like ten bucks. For like ten bucks, great movie, epic sound. Yeah, right. And you're like one of seventeen people in the whole theater. Yeah, it's it's the other thing about the old and the new together is that you'll see you'll be at a brand new shopping mall. Yeah, and there's a two hundred year old temple next to it. Right, exactly. Right, and they they co- in use people in are use, yeah. worshiping and, that day, and they they coexist, and it's. You know, the temples are really part of the landscape anywhere you go in Thailand. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of like when, because we both grew up in New England, the, the way you see, like, these old colonial churches. For sure. You know, uh, on the landscape with less child rape. 
you yeah. know, going on. Um, <laughs> no judgment. No judgment on Catholics. <laughs> on but... Catholics, but no, my hometown, the oldest church in still in use yeah. in the United States, the Old North Church in mm. Hingham. Yeah. You know, I mean, because again, you guys got to remember that like where we grew up, I mean, that's where the country started. Yeah. Like Boston and Philadelphia, there were a couple signatures that occurred in both those cities <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> that are the reason why people could pretty much, you know, walk around in the side of the street with a gun in their pocket. Yeah. In Rhode Island, we got the, the first Baptist church in yeah, America. We got sure. the, the Quakers, you know. Yeah. Rhode Island was... Rhode Island was founded essentially because there wasn't enough religious freedom in Massachusetts. <laughs> ah, that's <laughs> yes, so, agreed. So they bolted and started Rhode Island. Um, you know, it's but yeah, the the temples are, are very much part of the landscape, part of the lexicon here in in Thailand, and a big part of the the city, mm-hmm. right? And you know, of course, everyone comes here on vacation. Like, oh, I want to go to Wat Po. I want to go to Water Room, Grand Palace. Yeah, all these places and the, because they're in the Grand Palace is. It's in the middle of the city, surrounded by parks, and you know, you're a hop, skipping a jump away from you know Chinatown and all these other things. And what's so awesome about that is, yes, you can do those things. And quite frankly, if you're coming to Thailand for the first time, do I them. encourage yeah. you to totally do them. Absolutely, be a tourist for for a week. Be a tourist for you know as much as it just like feels comfortable. You're gonna read stories about being taken advantage mm. of, or they're gonna. Well, don't be an idiot. They're, exactly. <laughs> At the end of the day, I said this on my podcast the other day. It's like when I used to do life coaching or executive business coaching for these guys that were CEOs for like literally Fortune 100 companies. I mean, we go through this thing or whatever. And then I would, you know, they would get really in the mood. They'd be looking at it and then they would say, oh, yeah, Mike, give me the next piece of advice or whatever. Yeah. I say, I tell you what, here's a great tip for you. Don't be an idiot. So it's so the thing you hear a lot is people complain about these tuk-tuk scams. Like a tuk-tuk driver will pull off and be like, "Hey, I'll give you a free tour," and then he takes you to all these places and tries to force you to buy a stuff. Jewelry shop or something. Yeah. If you were in New York City yes. and a, a cab driver came up to you and was like, "Hey, jump in, I'll give you a free tour." You would never get in that cab. Or you probably would. Yeah. And you're the same jackass that's that going to do it over here. That gets in the tuk-tuk. Yeah. So don't get in the tuk-tuk. Now, to be fair, I can totally empathize with people that go to the uh, the Grand Palace or they go to Wat Po. Some guy standing outside. You know, there's there's a sucker born every minute, yeah. right, and two to take advantage of. And they say to you, what do they say? Oh, yeah, it's, it's closed. closed today. Let me take you to another. <laughs> so, you know, there's something to be said but, for but that. But again... Like, j- just because some random person tells you that, don't – you go to a tourist spot anywhere in the world, right? If you're in – if you're on um, the Freedom Trail in Boston, sure. right? Yeah, right? Or right. You're, you're walking by the palace in Bangkok or you're on the Champs-Élysées in Paris, someone's going to yes. want to take advantage of exactly, you. Exactly, yeah. Right? D- don't be that idiot. You know, do your research. Talk to someone who's been here. Talk to Mike. Talk to me. BangkokStrange at gmail.com. Absolutely. Right? Check us out on Facebook. Check us out on Twitter. <laughs> Twitter, yeah. yeah. For sure. And YouTube. Mm-hmm. We'll have some tourist-related content or some stuff that tourists can vibe off of pretty soon up on Twitter. And the people that want to transition, YouTube, yeah. too. You know, people that don't want to be tourists anymore. Yeah. But to be fair, it's like you and I were here for the first time before. And yeah. potentially someone walked up to us and said, yeah, the palace is closed today. And I was like, no, it's not. I kiss my ass. <laughs> I checked the website. It's freaking people that just walked inside of it over <laughs> yeah, there, yeah. you know? You know? Literally 10 meters away. Now, yeah. to be fair, if you're female and you're over here and it's friggin' hot and yeah. you've got super tight shorts on and your shoulders are showing the, and some woman comes up to you and tries to sell you a shawl, yeah. you got to friggin' buy it. Well, no, because they'll give it to you inside for free. Ah, good point. That yeah. is a good point. Yeah, you can like basically rent them for free. Yeah. You just walk it, up. Give and them, ask. I think it's 100 baht deposit. Yeah, and you get it back. And, and they give you a pair of elephant pants, essentially. Yeah, or idiot pants, <laughs> yeah. depending upon you know how many times. <laughs> don't, don't wear elephant pants outside a situation where you absolutely have to. <laughs> Ever. Ever. Do this. If you live in a town where basically everyone thinks that Thailand is Taiwan, yeah. or they or they because th- it's spelled with a T, and they're Asian. Or they, they, think they speak Taiwanese here. Exactly. Or they think it's a third world country. Yeah. Buy them a pair of these fucking elephant pants, yep. bring them home, and be like, oh my God. Traditional all, Thai outfit. All the Thais wear these. <laughs> <laughs> when they go to the mall, every student gets issued a pair of these in junior high. <laughs> And you should wear them every single day. In fact, do this. Go to school with these on. Yeah. Tell everyone that your friends have been to Thailand and you're ethnically friggin' just yeah. knowledgeable. St- start rocking a seashell necklace. <laughs> if you're a white person, grow some dreadlocks. Flip-flops at every yeah. event. Only flip-flops. Tank top with a beer logo on it. <laughs> and stop showering. Stop showering. Uh, and then you'll end up in Koh Phangan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or... or Co- Kobe Trode. 
I love Kobe Trent. I love Kao San, actually, you know, because that's the backpacker universe, right? Yeah, so Kao San Road, man, is like, but again, you could walk to the Kao San Road from the Grand Palace. Yeah, exactly. And so you can essentially go from the, the this cultural center of the city to a rave within like a 10 minute walk. Yeah, and uh, you know, one of the things that we've, we've been talking about doing is basically getting out in Bangkok. Because yep. now that we have the YouTube channel and stuff, and you know, again, to be fair, I mean, the reason this this podcast is well known and successful is because you started it with Woody. Yep. And, I, and again, I'm just really honored to be part of it, but it, it, we're growing it in a different direction, yes. which is really neat, it's really fun for both of us. Um, and you know, we've also got the time and, yep. and the passion for it, but what we want to do is you know specifically to the the topic we're talking about today about what is strange. So we want to go out into Bangkok where a lot of people have already been. Yeah, people have already been to Kasan. I mean, especially now, yeah. right? Kasan Road is is much different. It's dead. Yeah, yeah, because they took and they additionally they revamped the crap out of it. Yeah, it looks like a freaking strip mall. Could be. You know. Oh yeah. yeah. But I mean, in other words, it's not. You know, it, it, for example, one of the things that you could always buy there, right? PhD. Yeah. Can't get that anymore. No. Can't get these pieces piece of fake, fake paper. Can't get your, uh, can't get your uh, American driver's license. Well, I kind of wanted to get a marriage license there, yeah. you know, for the various <laughs> reasons of getting Gracie over here, but I guess I have to do that legally. So you so. used to be able to buy an uh, American driver's license, really bad fake, on Khao San Road for like 10 bucks. Plastic. Yeah. So I tried to buy, they got mad at me, so I tried to buy a university ID, ah, a Thai university smart. ID, and they were like pissed. They did not, because oh. they'll sell you a Harvard ID. Yeah, right. But uh, Thomas, Whoa. Chula, no. No, no, no. Come on now, man. Yeah. You're like you're crossing a line. Yeah, look, it, there's got to be some level of integrity in our home country. <laughs> yeah. All you other people, screw you. Yeah. You guys don't Done. know what the hell's going Done. on. Done. But yeah, Kaosan used to be, but you can still buy the, uh, they still sell the gas there, the uh, laughing gas. Really? The, so they, they'll, they'll nitrous. It's Nit yeah, the, yeah. Um, they, they sell nitrous balloons there. Okay. So you'll see a guy holding up like a balloon and selling the balloons for like 10 bucks. <laughs> 10 bucks. That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, you know, again, like there's a sucker born every minute, yeah. you know, and, and to be fair, you know, I got to tell you that like I've gone to countries for the first time and I've been, I don't know if I've been a victim of these, but I've done this sort of thing and yeah. it's like, okay, yeah, I've been like part of the experience. Mm. I'll also tell you though that like I went to Barcelona for the first time and I've been there like three or four times and the first time before I went there, of course, I Googled it and yeah. I looked in YouTube and all these you people. You didn't Yahoo it? I didn't. I binged it you actually binged it, because I knew it. I could get to the source. I asked Jeeves. I did. I thought I might actually, uh, you know, duck, duck, go it if necessary. <laughs> <laughs> web crawl it. I could web crawl it. I could, you know. <laughs> what, was, what was the other one? Um, uh, dog pile. Dog pile. Dog pile, yes. bitch. You know it. So anyway, so I read, and everyone's like, oh my God, whatever you do, watch out for the pickpockets. And they're going to steal your money, you know, down Barcelona. I mean, historical city. Yeah. The picture of Columbus waving at everybody from the top of it. Um, and who Columbus, a fucking horrible human being. It's interesting when people talk take talk about Thanksgiving, yeah. which of course was started, you know, where I grew up, and they're like, "Oh yeah, the you know the natives came in and the pilgrims were there and they embraced each other." Yeah. After a significant amount of raping and pillaging occurred, so all my Italian American friends will argue, "Oh, Columbus is a hero. <laughs> he, he didn't even fucking discover America. He never set foot on the country." West Indies, right? Yeah. yeah. And he raped and pillaged his way through. And they're like, "No, no, no. That's that's propaganda. Anti um, anti Italian propaganda." Like. This is 1920, and he came out of Spain. Yeah, and that's the thing, right? But he's so, Italian. He's a, yeah, but right. he was employed by uh, Spain or, or Portugal, one of the two. What do you ever the, the yeah. surety? No, what do you call those companies that they funded? Like the yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so I'm in there, and 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 what happens is, is you walk down this main road, and these guys will have these uh, sort of spinning things with lights, and they'll have like a like a rubber band and at they the shoot end. Shoot it up. They, shoot it up in the air. Just like in And does it in Kalsan? Okay. Yeah. It slowly floats to the ground, yeah. and as a tourist, what do you do? You look up at this thing as it's floating to the ground, yeah. and what is that guy doing as you're walking up to him? Taking your pocket. Absolutely. Yeah. But again, I did this. I walked down this street. I walked yeah. down at 4 in the afternoon. I walked at 8 in the morning, and I walked it at like 10, 30, 11 at night. Yeah. And I never once, because I'm not a fucking idiot. It's the same thing in Kaosan. I've never been, never had any issues in Kaosan. Yeah. I did, however, once see a, a, a couple, two white people, mm -hmm. a guy and a girl, in the Burger King at the top of oh, Kalsan Road Christ. at like two in the morning. Okay. And this girl decided that was a good time to try to <laughs> give this guy a blowjob. Inside the Burger King? Inside the Burger They're in the booth, right? And I, I don't... So, but they were also sitting. So if you look at the second floor of the Burger King, there's all the glass, glass. windows. They were sitting there. 
Now, luckily, she was too drunk. They had just left one of the clubs. Yeah. She was too drunk to figure out what was going on, and he was too drunk to know what was going on. So nothing happened. You could. She was like trying to get his pants undone, and literally in English, like, "Oh, I just want to suck your dick." Oh, and you're listening to this because you're up there. I'm, I'm at the next table. Let me tell you something. I mean, so it, of course I was like, "Like, wait a second. Yeah. I love Thailand. Can I get my phone out? I've never seen a white girl do that. I've heard that the ones locally, but here's the all kidding aside." Don't do shit like that yeah. in Thailand. D- don't be that asshole. There is a level of respect here yeah. that is different than in the United States. Yeah. And it's, it's a cultural thing, too. It's like, so the same thing, like, we, I think we're going to do an episode about dating, like a whole episode on dating. But even if you're out with a bar girl, like, that you paid for her time, it doesn't give you free reign to grope her in public. You like, make out with her in a mall because yeah. you think you're paying her? That won't no, work. That not, will not go down. She will, like, push you away. Yeah, no PDAs here at yeah. all. I mean, look, you know, you can kiss, hold hands. Sure. Gracie and I, you know, kiss on the, okay, honey, I'll talk to you later. You know, K- you kiss separate. on the top of the head, on the yeah, cheek, whatever. Exactly. Pat her on the ass, yeah. you know, stripper trick and tape. Oh, wait, no, that's a different country. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. That was the Middle time. East. Oh, my God. But that's, <laughs> yeah, where they really respect women. Oh, my God. So, but yeah, like, that, that's one of the other things. So it's cultural. Like, even like, like, you would not see, like, I've been thousands of times on the BTS and the mm. MRT, the, you know, the public transit had the train. Never seen anyone like making out, kissing, like late night on the train, nothing like that. And if you do, the people around them will let you know. Daggers yeah. come out of their eyes. It is so it it's the equivalent of walking onto the BTS and taking all your clothes off and taking a shit on the yeah. ground. It is just so obtuse, yeah, disrespectful, you know, kind of thing. So, I mean, there are plenty of things you can do here and be, you know, be inappropriate. I mean, you can go to Patia and you can get completely drunk and like fall down on the beach. Yeah. yeah. But don't do that and then, like, try and touch a Thai girl's head. Yeah. <laughs> Just, so yeah. even, Pat, like, walking street in Pattaya, right? Yeah. Like, you can go in the club and all types of shit's happening mm-hmm. in the club. You take a girl out of the club and it's very different game. Yes. Until you get to wherever your destination is. And it can be a little weird. Because yeah. let's face it, in the United States, you get completely shit-faced drunk. Yeah. And what do you do? You go into the nearest Burger King yeah. and you suck your boyfriend's cock. Yeah. Or try to. Or try to, <laughs> provided Dana's not sitting there with cue cards going, uh, hold on, I'm going to need you to look this way. Look yeah. into the camera. Yeah, yeah. Can you just move so I can get a yeah. better bounce with it's, this light? The back of your head is really starting to piss me off, lady. <laughs> so, and one could argue, oh my God, that's so strange. And maybe it is. Because what have, I'm sure you've done this, you've said to one of your buddies who's lived back home, potentially not even ever been over here, and you say, oh yeah, I live in Thailand. Yeah. What does he think? Oh, sex pat. Sex pat. Oh my God, you're married to a Thai girl? What is she, like 18 years old? Yeah, yeah. No, she's in her late 30s, and of course you take a picture of her, send it to him, and he goes, she looks like she's 18, yeah. this is full of shit. Yeah. He's like, oh, is she a bar girl? No, she has a master's degree, and she owns her own business. Right. Yeah. Because 99, um, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with like 96% of Thailand is not a red light district. Is it 99% though? It's probably 99.9%. Yeah. It, it's five nines. They're nice because <laughs> of the reliability and the redundancy that's yeah. available. But there is so much that's no, I mean, again, at the end of the day, there are less gay people in San Francisco than heterosexual people. Yeah. But what a people, Cape Cod, Provincetown, yeah, Cape Provincetown. Cod. Oh my, well, okay, yeah. There's actually a lot of gay people. Well, there. that one week, totally. Yeah. Yes, I mean, gay pride or whatever, yeah. right? I mean, but I don't think I don't think a lot of gay people live there because what the like this is the thing. If you live in Provincetown, what the fuck do you do for work outside the tourist season? Uh, well, you're you're a digital nomad. <laughs> <laughs> you're drop shipping, yeah, yeah, drop shipping from province down. Yeah, because you're like, you know what? I just like the humidity here in the summer better than Chiang Mai. And of course, it was so much cheaper to live in freaking province town, where the yeah. cost of living is just through the roof. Yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, it's very expensive. But it's hey, you know, to be it's clean. It's a dope town. It's a dope town, dude. It's really cool. It's all the way at the end. And at the end of the day, I've never been in a community where they are sort of known for having gay guys. Never been bothered. Did, did I ever tell you, like, uh, you know, a gonquit Maine? Yeah, absolutely. Super gay, like, uh, a gonquir is okay. what we call it. So, super, I didn't know it was like a super gay oh, uh, okay. town. Oh, okay. All right, yeah. This is like 20 years ago. I went on mm. vacation with uh, this girl I was dating. It was like f- end of fall. Okay. So, the end of season, yeah. really. Like, everything was super cheap. Right. And I found this, uh, this dope, um, like, bed and breakfast in Algonquin. Yes. And it was like, 
free. But it was like from a U.S. Like cost less than a hundred dollars. Oh a yeah, night. yeah, yeah. That's nothing. And you know, and, and <clears> it's in our garden. We're driving through. Like we we rented a car, drove up, and uh, driving up, and I'm like, it's fucking like a lot of dudes just holding hands around <laughs> right. here. Right? Like it's a odd. lot of brothers. Yeah. Are these guys family? Like <laughs> and so I check into the uh, check into the bed and breakfast, and they're like, you guys are here together. <laughs> Like, yeah, you know and, she's got a hole in her, like where we don't, right? <laughs> and, but I mean, but, but it was just like the coolest trip I've ever yes. been on. Yeah, it, it's such a good place, and uh, like it was just it was something that caught my eye when I first got got into town. That I because you're driving through that one main road, yeah, and uh, like the only time I ever saw like like that that it was noticeable. Mm-hmm. And uh, then I remember when I left, and I remember one of my family. I was like, oh, you went to a gonk with you know it's like super gay. I was like, I don't think it's that gay. Every place I've been to, though, the, uh, Key West, yeah. Key West, Florida, right? I was down there. So like, other people told me that's super gay as well, and like never really noticed it. None of the guys I slept with down there told me that it was a gay place. Well, you know how to tell <laughs> if one of your gay, when one of your guy friends is gay, right? He makes eye contact no. when you're fucking. Up. You're sucking on his dick, and it tastes like shit. Are we editing that out? We're not editing Mother that. of not. God, our ratings are going to go through the roof. <laughs> Michael, what are you doing in Bangkok? Well, I'm not doing a fucking podcast, Mom. Let me tell you that right now. Doing the G-rated YouTube she, live stream. She's like, Cox, when I Google your name, this bag, don't listen to it. <laughs> Why are you strange all of it? Oh, and I could really do without the language, Michael. <laughs> It's very vulgar. You should go to church and ask for forgiveness. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go to Buddha's temple and wrap my legs, my bare legs, in a friggin' take your shoes off. Uh, yeah. Oh, so here's the other thing. That's a strange. Wear wear shoes that are easy to take oh, off. Big time. It's, if, especially if you're doing like the tourist thing. So like when I go out on a daily, I have lace up shoes I wear. You're not taking those off really anywhere. Like if I go for a massage, obviously I plan to take them off. But but going to a mall, it's like yeah, like anywhere no, else. normal life. But if you're on a touristy thing, and you're going to, if you're on a touristy trip type thing, like your first time in Thailand, you're gonna go to temples. Wear at least a shoe that you can slip on and off. Yeah, because you're gonna have to take your shoes off everywhere. Every time you go inside. And yeah. it's not necessarily the whole taking it off thing. I mean, you can take off sneakers really quick. It's about putting them back on. Yes. And then you're like, oh, my God. after a while, it does kind of get, you know. You don't want to be that asshole who's holding up all your friends because you can't get your shoes on. The other thing you don't want to do is get frustrated and be like, ah, screw it. I won't take off my shoes and go inside. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Then you're the asshole. Yeah. Then you're super strange. Well, that's just that straight up not going to happen. Yeah. That abs yeah, absolutely. And the, the good news, though, is that the majority of the ties will... Um, they won't necessarily tell you you're doing the wrong thing. It, actually, in a tourist area, they would. Yeah. They would inform you if you're doing the wrong thing. But they're going to be incredibly gracious about it. Yep. I remember one of the first times I was in, a, in an actual temple, and there was the, a huge Buddha statue. And there's a whole bunch of people, and they're all sitting on their knees mm -hmm. with their feet behind them. Yeah. Right? And I go in, and I'm like, okay, well, that looks okay, but it's not really like, that comfortable. So what do I do? Stick my feet straight out. Yeah. Feet straight basically facing the Buddha, yeah. lean back on my arms. I'm like looking around going, oh my God, this place is so cool. I really love it in here. These people are having a great time. No one is making any noise. Yeah. They're all sitting like really appropriately and I'm just sitting here relaxing. Got my feet straight out. You know? like, yeah, don't show your feet to Buddha. And <laughs> luckily a guy came by, he tapped me on the shoulder and he says, no, 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 food, feet shouldn't. But the way he did it was so elegant. Yeah. I might have been a little, I don't know if I was embarrassed, but I was like, well, for the, the most important part was that I was like, thank God this guy told me. Yeah. And to the strange point of that, I've been in scenarios where I've been doing something because out of ignorance, culturally inappropriate, and basically been publicly humiliated. Yeah. And it's like, you know what? Dude? And then you start getting defensive. You're like, screw you. I never wanted to speak Spanish anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you freaking jackass. What the hell are you doing robbing a hot dog and bacon? You freaking retard. You know? yeah, this, There's a back east word. Yeah. You fucking retarded. You're so fucking retarded. So fucking retarded. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's definitely east coast, northeast. Oh, uh, yeah. So w one of the other things to think about with with the strangeness. Right? So outside like your, your first trip here as a tourist or, or doing whatever, you know, doing business here, interacting with people socially, it is a little different, right? There's a whole idea of saving face in yeah, Thai culture. For sure. And so it's like, like you said, the guy came over and like he helped you save face because he was like very quietly yes. like, yeah. you know, move your feet back. Right. 
And if you approach people with that same mindset, that same mentality, it's definitely strange from a Western perspective. Yeah. I'm like, the fuck are you doing? Dude, sit down. God damn it. Didn't you read the manual? You see every other motherfucker here yeah. just do what they do. You idiot. Right? That, I would be, he would be losing face if I did that. Yeah, big time. And so, and then I would look bad amongst everyone else. And if, then he would look bad as well because he, he's lost face. But I would have lost face for making him lose face. Additionally, if you you know, if you get frustrated by like the speed with which something is happening or it's not going your way yeah. in America, we do it this way. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's the reason America sucks ass. But I mean, no judgment. Yeah, no judgment. No judgment. But the thing is, is that the put, whole put, there's a reason we're not there. <laughs> yeah, copy that, dude. Up top. Yeah. That's what I'm talking. It is the whole saving face thing. Okay, so like nobody in in the United States like to be publicly embarrassed. No. Okay. But this is the way that I heard it described to me, and I love this one, and I always share that. If you think you're going to like oust somebody and yeah. be right by doing it in public and basically embarrassing them in public, doing that in Thailand to a Thai person and, and intentionally having them lose face is the equivalent in the United States of physically walking up to someone and punching them in the face. Mm. What do you think about that? You think that's well, fairly accurate? Well, I used to hang out with a lot of fighters, so that's kind of... That's what you guys did. You're like, hey, dude, I love you too. Ugh, okay, awesome. But, but, but it, is, it is true, and it is something that they'll remember and it'll hurt them. And we were talking earlier with Jib about like correcting language, right? So, mm -hmm. like, Jib speaks fluent English, but of course, there are times she makes grammatical mistakes. Yeah. Or she makes Articles, small, for example. Yeah. She makes small mistakes, and I'll correct her, but privately. Mm -hmm. But if we're at home with friends, I'll just be yeah, like, yeah. no. And she's yeah. like, ah. But if I did that in public, she would be like, uh, not the coolest thing. Mm, yeah, totally right. D yeah. Don't be an asshole, Dan. Have, yeah, exactly. <laughs> she goes, you know what word I know how to say in English? Asshole. Yeah. How was that? How was my pronunciation? <laughs> Douchebag. Yeah. That's another one I've learned that my girlfriends taught me <laughs> about my husband. But yeah, and so, um, and the reason I kind of describe it that way is if I were to walk up to you in public anywhere, right? Yep. You know, physically, you know, attack you, right? Yep. And your buddies were around. What would happen? You get a beat down. Yes. Or they'd help you. Depends on what. Day yeah, depending. It is. It's like, well, it is Dana. He's kind of <laughs> shitty to his wife. What do you say we? Be? And um, so over here, you will hear stories about mm. some guy got really drunk at a bar, started mouthing off to some Thai guy, yeah. and then hours later, seventeen of his other friends started beating this guy up and you're like, well, that's totally strange. No, <laughs> it's actually the way it works here, and quite yeah. frankly, it might slap you into being a little bit more appropriate. Yeah. So. Yeah, you know. Watch yourself. Be be normal. But yeah, the strangeness of which things occur. Also, you mentioned the speed of things. Yeah, Thailand is is very sabai sabai, mm -hmm. and uh, that's you know very laid back. Um, and they, a lot of Thais do things with a very loose sense of urgency. Yeah, the the definite the different sense of urgency. Yeah, and so like you're not going to change that to be, you know, I'm from New York. I'm from Boston. Okay, we yeah, do yeah. it like. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Don't come here and expect to change everything around you. You have to adapt to that. Because I'll tell you right now, if you're from Boston and all of a sudden a Thai person walks into a scenario that's either happening too slow or too fast to them, the last thing they're going to friggin' say is, oh, my God, we do it this way in Thailand. Yeah. So don't be a global douchebag and, mm -hmm. like, all of a sudden start imp trying to impose yeah. the way you think it's correct. Because it's the way you do things in Thailand, again, that's why we live here. Yeah. So th that's interesting. Cause I had, we were talking about freedom and like the sense of freedom that we have here. Yeah. I, I forget who it was. Someone commented on one of our videos and basically saying that, you know, t we're confusing like economic prowess with freedom. Okay. And that's a fair, a fair call, right? And it's easy to see how someone would think that, but I don't think that's correct at all. So yes, you come here and you have more economic advantage for sure as a Westerner living here. Even like if you're working here, you're making more than the locals, right? It's just the way it works out. It's a law about it. You have to. Make a even, certain amount. even if you're a teacher where there's okay. an exemption, you're making fairly more money than the average Thai. Fair enough. And definitely more than the average Thai teacher. Yeah, for sure. And so, you know, you're you're in a better financial situation. So yes, there is an. You can definitely have economic advantage here. Mm -hmm. I'm not denying that, but to me, the sense of freedom doesn't come with the economic advantage that I have. It comes with the the freedom of actually stepping away from the commitments of economic economics in the US. 
Like, I don't need, in the U.S., right, we say keeping up with the Joneses. Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. Right? And I'm sure a lot of, there's probably a European term for the same thing. Mm -hmm. It might, might even be the same term. But, mm. you know, basically keeping up with, you know, oh, my neighbor's got a new Porsche. I need to go get a new Corvette. Right. Or, or you know, oh, they just added a new garage. I need a garage. And it's got to be a two-car garage. Yeah, oh, my friend added. just got a house. I need to buy a bigger house. Right. And, there's all of these sort of aspects of like keeping up with life here, and you are very much able to step away from that when you come here. Now, to be fair, there is also a uh, hierarchy mm. in Thai society, and yeah. there are indeed behaviors like that that I see Thais doing. Mm. The neat thing about, I would submit at least me, probably you, but a lot of us like sort of Westerners that come over here, is that there is no competition that mm. we're in with the no. ties for sure, and no. they would prefer that we just kind of do our own thing, absolutely, and then integrate with them as the best we can. But it's like I have had people look at me and they would question like material things that I have, mm. or don't have, or don't have, and the fact that I don't have them is totally fine because I am a Westerner. Mm. Now you're you're fifty. Yeah, 52. 52. So we're both like Gen Xers. You're at the top yeah. end, I'm at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's very much our generation that, that is. Like, I know a few boomers who live out here, and they're still very much about material possessions. Yeah, which is kind of too bad. Don't yeah. you feel like, dude, we, we have the freedom from yeah. that. And you guys are still talking about how many friggin' lug nuts are on your bitchin' car. Like, what are you talking so about? So actually, I... I one of my clients had two boomers who work there, probably two of the most out of touch individuals I've ever met. Mm. Um, one's lived here for like almost 20 years. The <laughs> other one, uh, who, one of the most worthless human beings I've ever met, but that's another story altogether. Yeah. Uh, and actually someone commented that I always say, I'll tell this story in another podcast. Yeah, well keep watching. Yeah. So I, I I've got to, <laughs> I've got to make sure that I, I remember what stories I said I'm going to tell. But so one of the other ones, he actually, he's like, Oh, you haven't bought a car here yet. I'm like, <laughs> No, like I sold my three cars in America yeah, right. to come here and not have to own a car. Yeah. And like if I really want to take and like Jim and I are discussing like maybe buying property outside the city. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was like she's like, Oh, we'll need a car to get there. Like we don't actually have to own a car. Like I can rent a car yeah. with insurance, like for twenty dollars a day. Or grab. Well, if you're going like a couple hours outside the oh, city, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, right? yeah, yeah, you yeah. could get there. There's no way to get back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. Yeah. Right, but like, like if we bought property and we wanted to go out for a weekend to like, a, if we build a cottage or whatever, rent. right? Yeah, rent a car for two days with insurance, mm -hmm. zero liability after I'm done with it, big time, and just drive out and come back. And like, literally, you could get a pickup, like a four by four pickup for mm -hmm. like. 650 baht a day with, yeah. with insurance and everything. Definitely a thousand baht or less, right? Yeah. I mean, it depends. If a tourist area, you know, time of year, yeah. that sort of thing. But yeah, it, the point is very reasonable. Yeah. And it's the exact same car that's only two or three years old that you would rent at Avis yeah. from basically San Diego. So and here's the thing. It's like, so when he was like, oh, you haven't bought a car out here yet? Why not? He's like, I just, he was like telling me, he's like, oh, I just bought my second. I bought a brand new Pajero. It's like one of these big yeah, SUVs. Mitsubishi, yeah, Mitsubishi, Like, dude, yeah. you live in Bangkok like I do. <laughs> why why do you want to own a car? Like, like you, you take the train every day. Like, there's no need. But, again, that's part, I think that's like the Gen X and like yeah. the younger, like people younger than uh, us and younger are kind of more prescribed to that lifestyle mm -hmm. where it's like, I don't need to own a car. I don't need to own all this fancy stuff. And like you said, there's a, a Thai society definitely yeah. has hierarchical structures in it, mm -hmm. and there's there is some materialism yeah. within. How many condos do you own? How many Mercedes? Mm -hmm. Right, Mercedes is a big status symbol. Yeah, especially for middle class Thais, because yeah, that's what the king drives. Yeah, right? yeah. And so you get to the point where it's like, I don't have to be involved in that. I'm right. not. You know, and some people do get stuck in that mindset, like, oh, I need to, I want to show up and be. With, no, because no matter what, we're not in that hierarchy for them. We'll never be Thai. We'll never be Thai. And they don't you expect You could have it. a Thai passport, you yep. know, speak Thai fluently. You're not Thai. You're still from wrong. Mm -hmm. doesn't matter. And that's a good thing. For us. It's, it's not a bad thing. Yeah. And the ability to step away from the economic stress and structure of the U.S., but still be very comfortable life-wise. Oh, yeah. In the U.S., like, oh, you know, yeah, I'm going to buy a, turn a van into a house and go live in a national park right. with a solar panel and a water purifier. Sure. You're, you're roughing it pretty bad. 
Yeah, and I mean, again, everyone has their own desire of what is yeah. comfortable. Yeah, you know? But exactly. again, for you and I, it's like, I mean, again, so you live, what is it, 200 square meters? Yeah. Yeah. No, 280. I, 280, yeah. yeah, so like 300 square meters. And so I'm in like uh, 60, 55, 60. Yeah, but how much of this do I actually live in? You know, it's... Downstairs in this room. And then so, you sleep, well, obviously. Well, I and, work in, in yeah, these yeah, areas, yeah, exactly. right? That's right, right? So, like, we run our business here. Mm-hmm. So your well, living is up here. Yeah, my living is I have like the small room, and then we have the living room mm-hmm. where you're trying to convince me to turn my <laughs> living room into the new studio. So here's the thing: I don't see any downside really to taking <laughs> the room that is twice the square footage. You know, because that living room, I haven't seen a whole lot of living going on in there. <laughs> I see a whole lot. <laughs> the TV in there. Yeah, it's right. Like, so that that really is. The, so the couch is actually a bed. It's a convertible. Well, that must be cool. It, watch movies in there. Yeah, it's so kind of cool. So we watch movies in yeah. there and uh, chill out, but. For the most part, the the reason that room's not suitable for for living is the aircon is crazy loud. Oh yeah, for the studio that wouldn't work. And it's just like yeah. not not so, not such a good look. Gotta upgrade that, I think, but, and that'd be a pain. But ideally, I mean, that is that would be a good size room. Well, don't forget. I mean, I'm I'm more than happy with the temperature that is outside <laughs> this door. Yeah. It is not air conditioned. I like it warm. Oh, okay. If you guys don't, so I'm wearing a scarf, and you guys have seen me in scarves before. If you know me, I'm also wearing jibs. Shawl, shawl <laughs> over my legs because I'm certainly not going to invest in pants. That's another thing. So yeah, so this aircon, it's not as loud, but it really only works at like one temperature. It's got a binary, so it can go colder. But this is essentially mm-hmm. the warmest it gets without being like crazy cold. All I knew, I didn't even know that it had a, a, a thermostat. It's ah. a thermostat on this side, but it like it's very finicky. Okay, got it. And so like if you I go jiggle it, if I go too much warmer, Do you need to jiggle it. It's, it's got a jiggle action. Do you have to jiggle it. You jiggle Fair it. Fair enough. But you go too much warmer. <laughs> yeah. And it's like. Whatever. It's like a heater. So like, like yeah, the switch doesn't kick very on. Very binary. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of like a knife switch, basically. Like <laughs> it can definitely go colder. <laughs> <laughs> that is of no interest to me that's for sure yeah, my, i can't feel my toes right now but whatever we're doing a podcast so let me ask because i mean you were you know in boston you've been you spent some time in new york city right little like i never lived there but okay. i spent a lot of time visiting and use the out. train yeah to get around so i i bet if you're watching from boston like if you live in downtown boston not like i like i say i grew up in boston but that's only because basically it's the biggest city there that people know if so i say I actually hey, lived in boston yeah, yeah. you were lived hey, right and so, so like, if you lived in quincy you yeah, did no. not live in boston exactly. you know who i'm talking to <laughs> <laughs> and i grew up in hingham and people are like what the hell's hingham yeah. like they might even know hingham england before yeah. they would know hingham but the point is is that it, you know you definitely needed a car where i grew up oh yeah for sure san diego all of uh, P- Pawtucket, where i grew up needed a car absolutely had yeah. to get around i mean the buses were ridiculous they're yeah. like offensive they don't where I lived in Pawtucket, the bus went there like once every two hours yeah and then to get you know anyway so it doesn't work that way whereas over here there are non-air conditioned buses yep. there are air conditioned buses and then there is the bts this is all on the same and, and road the mrt right but on the same like on sukhumvit yeah. you have three cho- and then of course you can also take a cab and do all this a tuk tuk or a song tell. so i guess if you're from like you know downtown boston right you live in like you know you're going to northeastern for example or something and you're taking the tea everywhere or what do they call the train in new york the subway i think they just call, they it, just the call subway. it subway yeah. and if you're doing that are you taking the l i got a friend yeah. who lives in chicago, chicago right the l. um and uh, you're like, yeah, I mean, I got, I, I'll never forget this. Like one of the first times growing up, you know, and I would like meet guys at like university who came yeah. in from out of state and they're like, oh yeah, from New York City. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. We want to take your car. He's like, I don't have a car. Yeah. I met people from New York City who didn't have a driver's license. Yeah. And that's obtuse, right? But they're yeah. like, bro, what do you think I'm going to do? Park it somewhere? What? Yeah. That's the other thing. Sukumvit. Yeah. You want to get from point A to point B? You're like, oh yeah, I'm going to take my Montero yeah, or whatever. Right. You're going to walk. You, yeah. Take the train. You're a jackass. So I mean, here's, here's the other work. thing with the, the you talked about the air conditioned buses and the non-air conditioned buses. Mm. A lot of people's default is to go aircon bus. Agreed. But you might be better off yes. taking the non-aircon mm-hmm. bus. Right? And I have often done this, and, and not just for price, but it is cooler often because it's not packed nuts to butts. And it's and, and depending upon time of day, if yeah. it's like bumper to bumper traffic, yeah. you may not get hotter, yeah. but you'll die of asphyxiation. Yes. So there's that downside. I will say that the because I take the the A1, A2, A3, right? Yeah. This from from Don Juan. Those are only aircon. It, right, exactly. Yeah. And they also have an extra sort of amount of space. You can't really do nuts to butts because they have the massive amount of yeah. open area for luggage. Correct. 
And so I've been on that where it's like been totally packed and it's not too bad. The air conditioning is decent on those. But the ones you're those are, talking those about. Those are nicer than the city buses. Like almost brand new. Mm. I mean, you know, and but yeah, the city buses that are air conditioned, there's actually two kinds of air conditioned buses, right? Yeah. There's the smart bus, which is the fairly new one, kind of yeah. like the ones from the airport. And then there's just like the ones that potentially didn't have air conditioning and mm. now they have air conditioning. Yeah. So they're kind of old. And those are the ones that you... That can be a little rough. It's questionable. So the nice thing about the non-air conditioned buses, they have this mechanical fan system. Yes! So they have these rotating fans on the ceiling, which is cool, but sometimes they don't work, which True. is bad. Yeah. But the, the thing that really gets me, that the reason I'll often avoid the non-air conditioned buses mm. is the steps. Agreed. So the steps are three steps, three different sizes. And they're, they're narrow and wide all at the same time. Occasionally, there'll be varying degrees of rust yeah. on these steps. <laughs> and angle. Yeah. And so, but again, so here's, we're, you know, arguably, like, we're talking about something, you're like, oh, my God, it's like third world country. It's like, you know, Venezuela in the middle yeah. of the... No, it adds to the coolness, yes. dude. It does. It, 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 it arguably could be, you could say, oh, my God, you guys are so strange. You actually like something that's defective. So No. It, like, the only reason I really avoid the steps is my knees. So going up's no big deal. Right. And then coming down, deesh, 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 and yeah. you've got to do it before they take off again. <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah. So buses here don't really, it's kind of a hot load, hot offload situation. Yeah. I mean, unless you're like about, not, if, if you're an older Thai woman, yeah. Those, he will almost get out of his chair and yeah, help, help you. Yeah, help you, yeah. As will the other people that are on the bus. Yeah. If you're like a white guy, this presumably <laughs> should be able to lift 350 pounds. No, better you're be on your little, better be able to roll, homie. It, it it may not make a full stop. So I used to take the bus home a lot when I lived in uh, north of Chatucha. I would take the train to Chatucha, and then take the bus up to the uh, the main soy I lived on. Okay. Now no song tells where I live, but I could take a scooter. But it's like one kilometer, so I would yeah, just walk. Not bad, yeah. Right, and, uh, and there was sidewalk there, so it was oh, there you go, easy walk. Yeah. Um, because it's a newer neighborhood, because how far north it is. But, like, the uh, getting off, because it's a main bus stop, and, like, all the buses, it was, like, right past the La Prow intersection. Oh, okay. Which is, like, a, a shit show of an intersection. So, wait, is it kind of like Chatter Chak, where it's, like, bus, 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 bus one after another, so like that? Th no, because they'll just all pull up and stop in the same location. So they, they just, because all the buses. Not in go, a line? They all go down with poverty, <laughs> right? No, no. They're, they're, they're jockeying for position to get in. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so they're all, they're, so the buses are coming from La Prow and like taking the turnaround and merging. And then the buses are coming from Chat to Chat and they're all fighting in the traffic. <laughs> and then everyone's jockeying to get to that pull off spot. It's kind of like National Stadium, like, but if they didn't have like the. Yes. The, <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> if you guys have never been there, take the BTS to friggin' National Stadium because it's a, it's a giant circle yeah but there's bus stops at like every like every quadrant yes it's awesome and they all pull in sometimes the number 37 will be on the inside sometimes yeah. on the outside yeah. you got to know which one you gotta, yeah you gotta know how to get on how to get off it's awesome it's so entertaining so, so you take this bus would you have to like jump off yeah like, so some, it would just kind of roll into the into the <laughs> you're stop. like well he's slowing down to five like, kilometers. All, right, all right what do i gotta do here and like you gotta position yourself you, know, you gotta your you gotta ring the bell to let them know you want to get off wait was, eh, is yeah, it a buzzer you gotta, yeah you push the okay, thing yeah. so but like most of the time like Someone's always getting off there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I got that. like, at the main one. Mm -hmm. So, like, I, I would always hit it. But for me, the other issue is if I'm standing, if I don't have a seat. Right. Because right, a lot of times, if I'm on the bus, I just don't want to sit anyway because, like, I've been sitting, like, okay, yeah, meetings yeah, right, all day, yeah. you sure. know. I'd rather stand mm. and just kind of stretch my legs. Right. And so, not a big deal for me, but I can't see where I'm going because I'm so tall. <laughs> You're inside of the room. Yeah, yeah so right. I'm in the room. So, I tried to explain this to Jib the other day. Like we were driving by something. And she's like, oh, look at this. I'm like, I can't see. Yeah, it. like, what are you talking? It's got to get down in the, yeah. yeah, right. And plus, we're in the backseat of a grab, and I'm like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's got these tiny ass windows, and Jib's like, "Oh, look!" Like, no, so <laughs> how tall is Jib? Five feet? No, no, she's like one hundred sixty-three centimeters, five four, something like that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And so, well, no one knows centimeters. <laughs> well, no Aztec. He probably knows centimeters. He's freaking Australian. Yeah. So, yeah. any Americans, I apologize, but yeah. the imperial system sucks. <laughs> um, go metric. Absolutely, go metric, go buddy. Metric, yeah. Big time. <laughs> They're like fucking nerds. metric. We guys are freaking are weird. We, 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 engineers. So yeah, you get to you get to 
you get on the bus and I can't see where I'm going. So I have to like I, at one point when I would take this bus all the time, I had the uh, like the the marks on the sidewalk memorized. Saw so, him pulling up. <laughs> nice. So I'm like, all right, choo, choo, and jump off. You don't do that. Like I like I'll sit there and hold my phone on Google Maps. No, I'm I'm good. Watch the really. <laughs> yeah. So your best are more vid- yeah, that's, that's right. You're a veteran. <laughs> veteran. I'm new. Veteran bus guy. Still in my first year yeah. of full time. You know. Yeah. So that'll be kind of bus eight is bus eight is a known commodity i've got a bus eight video on my channel i'll link it below bus eight can be is that the crazy one where it's, the drivers are like supposed to be super crazy yeah that, there's a thai movie out right now called bus 888 which does that mean something like 808 888 does that is that so well, like, 808 is a drum machine right okay but, yeah, but yeah. 888 i think it's just supposed to be because it's bus eight that okay, they're making fun it. of yeah 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 all right that makes sense there's some interesting things like that, like numbers, right? Yeah. I mean, now in my building, obviously there's a 13th floor, there's a yeah. 13th floor, but it's 12A. Yeah, that's another strange thing, because obviously we've heard of you know 12, 14, yeah. that sort of thing. But what's interesting is the significant delta in cost, mm. because they know it's the 13th floor, but they're not going to say anything. Yeah, it's 12A. Half price. <laughs> I had no idea until I signed the. Of course, you know the woman that showed it to me. Yeah. She's not going to show me the inexpensive one. Yeah, half price. Wow. If I live three floors, I'm on the tenth floor. If I live three floors above me, half, half price. price. Wow, because yeah. it's the thirteenth floor. It's unlucky. What I'll tell you, you how goddamn lucky I feel when I'm paying half my rent. You know, you know what's crazy? That's freaking amazing. Ties luck's a big thing in Thai culture. Yes, and so that's one of the other strange things that you'll know. Like, so not so jib is. You know, very, I, I would say cosmopolitan, I yeah, guess yeah, is the right sure. word. Yeah, Thai, modern. You know, very educated, mm-hmm. you know, scientist. Yep. Right? She, she's not out there rubbing trees to get numbers. Ties, they do this thing where they rub the tree until they, they divine a number from the tree. Is that like the roll, the, it's pouring into the water yeah, on yeah. the base of the trees? Okay, yeah. And then they'll rub it and mm-hmm. like they'll wait for the tree to divine them a number type sure. of thing. Yeah. And then they'll play the lottery. Every time they do that. I'm still in their wallet. <laughs> <laughs> this is a tip to any of our Thai listeners, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you see a bald white dude <laughs> while you're rubbing the tree. <laughs> Son of a... I just lost $3,000. Screw this lucky tree business. <laughs> yeah, more like 300 baht. <laughs> 300 baht. Right? I mean, so, you know, I give them a little more credit. So there are lucky numbers in Thai, but the funny thing is 13 is not an unlucky number here. Right. So I guess that's probably an indication that my building was designed for foreigners, huh? Well, I mean, so but even my old building, which was built in the '90s when I lived in Aso, okay, you know, no, no, thirteenth floor. What is it? Twelve, fourteen, or is it twelve, twelve A? I think 14? it was twelve, twelve A. Okay, yeah. I've never. Do you, I don't remember twelve A in the in the U.S. I just remember twelve, fourteen. Yeah. yeah. But you know, th- there are buildings here that have a thirteenth floor because it's not a big deal. But I think. I yeah. think the I think the perception became that oh Westerners think it's unlucky yeah. so there's got it's a luck thing. What's the unlucky Chinese number? Is uh, it like six? Or? Maybe seven? Or Is it seven? Eight? I don't know. Yeah, I don't either. Okay, but I have been in buildings where like I look up on the panel yeah. and it's like one, two, three, seven. 15 i'm like jesus how many friggin' individual how many other cultures are coming here? oh that's an unlucky number well you know what's unlucky for me paying full price i tell you what why don't you give me this room for less than i want to you know so are you moving rooms next year when your lease is up <laughs> what's interesting about my place and i discovered this when i was in the base mm. uh, if you guys there's going to be if you come here and you start airbnb you will likely stay in a San Siri property, right? Because yeah. they're everywhere. They're nice. They are pretty nice. A little smaller than I'd like. Probably the, the probably the nicest builder in Thailand, in Bangkok at least. Since Certainly one of the largest. Yeah, they, they do some nice properties. Yeah. yeah, and so it was pretty good. And the neat thing about the guy renting it to me, or you know, the Airbnb host, he was on the board of yeah. San Siri. So we're talking, and I'm like, did I see San Siri everywhere? He's like, oh, yeah, I'm on the board. I'm like, oh, really? I said, what do you do, advising? He says, oh, yeah, we got a ton of projects. Now, this is in December. Yeah. Pre-COVID, life is fucking awesome, right, for mm-hmm. this guy. 1,500 projects they're working on at any given time. Wow. I'm like, how big? He's like, when have you not seen one of our buildings? Yeah. Good point. Anyway, so in that building, we're on the top floor. And yeah. I'm thinking, this is going to be awesome. We're way up there. It's going to be quiet. It's going to be great. So noisy. Yeah. And because it was like near the freeway and the, for whatever reason, the, the sound just seemed to like bounce all the way up to the top of the building. Like uh-huh. we couldn't, there would be like three blocks away, a dog would bark. Yeah. We'd hear it. I'm like, this is freaking. So now I'm on the 10th floor and I'm like shielded from like the main street that I'm on and everything. 
So I'm cautious about moving even to like save some money because I would much rather spend three times what I normally would need to do and get a good night's sleep. Yeah, but like if you what if you just buy the room three floor or rent the room three floors above? I yeah, maybe. I mean again, who knows? I mean yeah. I would assume the sound would be the same. But I've had this one experience where I'm like, so simply all I would do would be like, I got to sleep there a week and then I'll let you know. So Jim and I, our previous place in Asok was the, the penthouse in our building. So it's like the top two floors. And when we moved in, there was like no, nothing going on, right? Like literally a week later, they stopped building a, a condo right behind our building. Friggin' it's a crane. Cranes and yeah. They start it, working early yeah, here. Yeah. And, <laughs> but so... Most of the time, it wasn't too bad. Right? Okay. Jib was working from home at the time, so I felt bad for her. Mm. But I was I was out most days. And so, but I would come home and they'd still be working for like another hour or so. They usually till seven, right? Sometimes, yeah. yeah. And so it wasn't really like it was always loud, but it was never obnoxious mm-hmm. until they got up to the floor that we were on. <laughs> the height, the yeah. noise is coming straight into and, your window. And then for like three weeks while they were building up those levels, then it's like, oh, Thank God. Make it higher, please. Yeah, and then they finally they finished. So, yeah, they ended up going up. I think it was like 15 floors higher than my building. So what floor were you on? 24, 25. Okay, all right. Yeah. So, in a 40. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, so they went to about 40, maybe like 38 or something. Mm-hmm. But, you know, then with all the roof stuff that they, sure. they put like a – actually, they had a dope pool. I could see the pool when they were building On it. the top floor? No, like halfway up. Oh, that's pretty cool. And it was like hangs off the side. It was, nice. It was pretty cool. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, it was a nice building. But – you know, while they were building the outside, it was mm. rough. And then they were loading the uh, the interior stuff as they went. So, like, they, you'd see them in the morning loading up the cranes and dropping stuff in every day. That's one of the reasons, actually, I kind of like my building. My building is probably about 20 years old. Mm. So, at least in my experience, and certainly this is where it is where I live, walls are thicker. Yeah. Right? So, great soundproofing. So, same, same in my place. It was all in... So where we lived, it was like it was built on the roof. So it was like they built it up to floor 23. Nice. And then like, all right, 24, 25, we'll build it on the roof. Yeah. And so even when like, so I would walk out every morning. And what I loved about this place was not walking into a hallway. Mm-hmm. Like I would leave my front door into the garden on the roof. Very cool. And so that was pretty awesome. That's nice. So you just, and we had the, the helipad was above us. Mm-hmm. So and I don't even, I don't think it was functional. Like like I went just up. Just had a big H on it. So I went up. So I went up on it a few times. Okay. And like, they're, they're, if a pilot saw this like overhead, he'd be like, <laughs> no. I'll find somewhere else. Not to land. landing yeah. there, dude. I land on that goddamn crane. <laughs> exactly. <before> I, <laughs> it's a lowercase H for God's yeah. sake. It's so small. So it was, it was just like rusty, and there were pieces like <laughs> you tell it been patched together. Yeah. So like probably just to match code or whatever to meet code. Not a lot of usage. Not a lot of usage, and so. But but it added like a little bit extra like protection from the sun. Oh, so, okay. So like our place was never crazy hot. There you it was, go. You know, it was nice. And but like the nicest thing was not walking into a hallway. So kind of escaping that sort of yeah. industrial life. So two story. Yeah. So what was it like? Living room and kitchen on the bottom floor, and then rooms on the set. Like how was it? So sort it was of laid like, out? you walk in, it was like a little like mud room. Okay. And then there's a, a little, little walk-in kitchen. Okay. Um, it was. A bedroom, but it was really a uh, like an office for okay, us, yeah, our home office. Right. Well, it, was, it was bigger than this. Okay. But it was like no closet or anything like that. And th- there was a bathroom on the first floor, then like a little living room and mm-hmm. like a little patio out the back. All right. And then upstairs was just uh, two bedrooms. And okay. Two, two bedrooms, two bathrooms. It was pretty nice. I, mean, I think you told me you're paying like what, 50, 60,000 a month? Yeah. Yeah, that's not too bad. I mean, considering, you know, where it, obviously the location was great. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I'm sure you. Oh, was this also? You had like a doorman. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Pretty good yeah, quality well, service. It's not a bad spot. Yeah, for sure. And like, like, I mean, most places have like a. He's not like a in a suit and tie doorman. But, yeah. But like, like if I told him like my friends are coming, like. They, you let them in. Yeah. And, and to be fair, it's like, I don't have a doorman, but I have 24-7. Yeah. There's a guy in a uniform. Yeah. And, you know, of course, part of his job now is to do the temperature thing yeah. and, you know, make sure. Um, but, yeah, I mean, if I, like, walked in, I don't know what would happen. I mean, obviously, they, you know, Gracie showed up with me yeah. initially, and I think she even signed the lease. I know that they made her give her a copy of her passport. Yeah. So she's, like, as part of the record of living there. 
And, um, <clears throat> you know, but I don't know. I mean, if I walked in, like, if I walked in with you, they'd be like, whatever. Yeah. He'd, like, say hi to me. So, but... like, and, like, the same thing. Like, if they saw me come, like, obviously, I'm, I'm fairly recognizable. <laughs> yeah, even though we, we the, have that. Th yeah. There were some other expats sure. living there. Yeah. And also, the guys who, who rent it, they know where I live. Yeah, who, yeah, who yeah, run yeah. The, the guys who run the front door, they know where I live. They absolutely know the guy in the penthouse. Yeah. So, it's for like, sure. it's like, all right, go ahead. Yeah. And uh, you, you're, you're heading up there. And if I come in with my friends or whatever, she's like, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Sorry, right away. Yeah. And yeah, it's not not a bad place, right? It was, it was a good good spot to live in while I was working near there, right? It yeah, that's true. You're working near there, yeah. yeah. Which is what uh, Moch uh, I mean, uh, Chitlom, Asok, Asok. Okay, yeah. got it. Yeah, Chitlom was pretty nice, man. That's I walked a down there. Spot. <sighs> Expensive, yeah. Kind of too western for me, though. It is very so. It's very western, very high so tie. Yeah, and very expensive area. We have a, a project that we're working on. We'll tease it a little bit yep. here because this will be out in a few weeks. For sure. Is, uh, our BTS project where we're going to yeah. visit a lot of the stations and give you guys some some info and do it in a very strange way. And just so you know, I mean, you say our goal, I think, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Every station. Every single station. Every yeah. station. Because there are, you guys have heard of Asog, you've heard of Nana, and mm -hmm. I can tell you right now, when we go to Nana, we're not going to get off on Nana and go to Nana freaking Plaza. No. We're going to go somewhere where you've never seen. Exactly. Because... Well, it's strange, because the, the whole point of this is the things in Bangkok you don't know about. Right. And mm. like, like we were talking earlier about, I did the episode with Woody about how the fuck can Soy Cowboy exist? Totally. Cause the where rent. It's at. Yeah. And, you know, so like we're, we want to explore things that you don't know about Bangkok. Mm -hmm. Right. And that, that's the goal here. And so, yeah, we're not going to get off at Nana Station and be like, all right, Nana Plaza. Let's, <laughs> Woo <-hoo>! let's, yeah. <laughs> Titties, yeah. lady boys. And of course, you and I go there. It's like, yeah, I'll have a, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, have a salad. Yeah. Maybe uh, some soda water. Yeah, now, of course, when we go to Asok, we'll show you Pala. Absolutely. Because we're, who doesn't go to Pala when you're at Asok? We are going to have to have... And here's what's interesting about Pala. I had absolutely no clue it existed. Mm -hmm. How many times... You walked past it. Every time. Yeah. And just had no idea. Yeah. In fact, I think I probably did walk by one time, if I if I remember correctly. I smelled pizza, because it smells amazing there. Amazing. And I said to my... Amaze balls. It smells amaze balls. Yeah. Slap it on the desk. And I probably <laughs> thought... Wow, Dunkin' Donuts is like making some freaking pizzas or something. The donut pizza. Yeah, because there's a Dunkin' Donuts right there. Yeah. So naturally. So if you're a New Englander, right, you know Dunkin' Donuts. Yes, you right? have They to. have it in San Diego, right? Uh, not really. Okay. I mean, in fact, no, they don't. They used to have them, but they don't. Okay. Krispy Kreme is what's okay. in San Diego for donuts. So if you're a New Englander, if yeah. you're a fucking New Englander, yeah, you yeah. fucking know Dunkin' if Donuts. If you know where to park, Bobby, and get some coffee, you're going to Dunkin'. So if you're from Rhode Island, you give directions to places based on the yes. Dunkin' Donuts that they'll pass. And just to be clear, you don't say Dunkin' Donuts. You Dunkin'. You say Dunkin'. Yeah. You're up Dunkin'. If you're going to Dunkin', you're up Dunkin'. Yeah. You going? You want something from Dunkin'? You're going up. The, I'm going up Dunkin', Bobby. Yeah. You want to give me a pocketbook? Or what the fuck you want me? <laughs> To do pocket here. Book. Your pocket book? So the Dunkin' Donuts here is very different. Yeah. Very and not different. as good. So well they coffee here well Dunkin' Donuts the coffee, coffee is, sucks yeah. ass. And but here they do it Thai style, yeah. which probably makes it palatable. Yeah, I would I would say I've never ordered it though, just because of my experience with Dunkin' Donuts. Because it's Dunkin' Donuts. What's and the point? Like, yeah. That's why I do three in one. It tastes better than fucking Dunkin' Donuts coffee. <laughs> oh God! God. <laughs> Here is where the sophistication of me goes into the fucking toilet. If there ever was any degree of <laughs> if like, there ever was, if there ever was. Mike drinks twenty three percent of his beverage is sugar, and he's like, boy, this coffee's good. <laughs> well, meanwhile, I'm downstairs grinding beans and there are t so we do this podcast Tuesdays at nine in the morning, Bangkok time. <laughs> and there is 30 minutes of no show prep because this guy is like double clicking on a fucking French press in a can. And it's a, I don't even know if you have anything here of that volume. No, it's I mean, it is 32 ounces, right? <laughs> It's a 900 mil. <laughs> there are factories in the United States that put preservative fruit in this thing so that they can sell it to Costco. This thing is so large. It comes with a shoulder strap, as far as I know, this beverage container. And he is, and he spent so and I'm just and he's like, oh, do you want some? I'm like, no, 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 just give me some hot water. I travel with my own fucking three in ones because of course they're so expensive. It, it, you know, but it's just, I mean, you're a connoisseur. So I, buy, bean water. I buy the same beans every every month. Wait, what day? Today is the 20th? 20th, yeah. Okay, so what? The 23rd, you're doing the coffee drink-off or something? No, October 3rd. October 3rd. Okay, you so You want to come by for up. it? 
Uh, no, it's late at night for you. Meaning it's after 7? It's 9 p.m. Oh, it's 9 p.m. 9 p.m. Bangkok time. I'm rarely awake at yeah. 9 p.m. Because, again, I like to get up yeah. before. Like, like at 4. Pretty much. Yeah. I like to get up. And the nice thing about it, too, is that I don't have a job. So I don't have to get up to an alarm. So here, I, fucking it, I also like to get up mm. early, but Which, I also like to go to bed late. Yeah. See, so I'm like, I can't be up in two hours. Yeah, no, I like to, uh, I mean, again, at the end of the day, I think it kind of started when I was spending a lot of time uh, with Gracie mm. and we would potentially be in the Philippines and we would be in areas where once the sun set, it was pretty much the end of the day. Town closed. I mean, the ta- yeah, it might be. The um, village closed. The village, yeah, and certainly when we're, we're at the farm, her parents are like, well, I mean, you look outside. There's zero light. You're like, okay, time to sleep. Yeah, I mean, and it's awesome because then you, at least for me, it is. Then I wake up at like four thirty when so it's getting light out because so of the, the chickens. In the village, do they have um, air conditioning or not enough electricity for that? So the short answer is there is enough electricity for okay. that, um, but uh, you don't do that. I mean, you would have to seal off the house, right, okay. to have the even the split systems kind of thing. So no, there's there, there's none of that. There is a hotel in the in the sort of the little village there, and, and the hotel rooms have you know air conditioning yeah. installed and that sort of thing. But there, I mean, the the way that the windows work is there's a giant hole, of course, yeah. and then in that space they have um, it's basically a piece of wood that's on sliders, and there's three of them. Yeah. So you can move them all out of the way, and then you have like two thirds of the window that's open, or you can have one third. I mean, no screens. No screens. Yeah. Which, interestingly enough, I remember we were up there and I said, she's like, oh, yeah, well, there's going to be mosquitoes. I'm like, you know how to prevent that, right? Like, he just closed. <laughs> so I showed her the whole thing and everything. And so then she built this new house that we built. Yeah. Second floor, bedroom, installs screens. How does she install them? <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Pretty permanent. <laughs> <laughs> so no cleaning the screens. So there's no cleaning the screens. There is no moving the screens. Like, oh, I'd really like to stick my head out and look around at this beautiful... No. So, you know, I mean, again, baby steps. Yeah. She's, she's she's getting there. But I was I was actually really impressed with her because, of course, she's trying to explain... I wasn't there at all for the, this construction. She's explaining to... First of all, it's her uncle. Yeah. So he's like, he's like, okay, well, my niece wants me to build her a house. She doesn't know anything. Yeah. She's my niece. She's a little Filipina girl, and she's dating some white guy. Yeah. And so she's like, well, no, I want to put screen. <laughs> so she's explaining. And I said, okay, well, here's what you do. You have the ability to remove them. Yeah. I mean, if you want to do one piece, that's fine. But you got to be able to so you can, you know, clean them. Yeah. I said, or <laughs> you could do the sliding, yeah. you know, kind of thing. And, uh, and so I get there and the whole window is covered in screen. Yeah. No frame, right? Uh, not really. Yeah. No. It's just kind of like, I mean, again, of course, there's, you know, like two by fours and stuff in the walls, yeah. right? But they cut it out. They didn't necessarily put, you know, because, of course, the top of the door, right? They have the weight yeah. bearing, you know. So, um, there's not as much of that yeah. there. It's not to U.S. code. Let me just say that. So do your, do your windows open in your condo? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So you have screens. I don't have screens. And here's what's interesting is there is a track for screens. Yeah. And some of my neighbors have screens. So I said, hey, can I, like, buy some screens, right? Yeah. And I actually went to, um, I almost said Pro Home Club. Pro. But yeah, Home Pro, thanks. So I went to Home Pro. I thought, well, maybe I'll, you know, they have the standard yeah. size here. But apparently they're, like, custom and they'd have to make them. She said yeah. they'd be a 1000 baht. I'm like, fine, do it. So, um, but she never did, of course, because it's Thailand. And yeah. she's like, why would you want to buy screens? Mm. So... But what's cool about the 10th floor is I can pretty much have the windows wide open. Yeah, no mosquitoes. No mosquitoes. Yeah, but birds. No. And I got pigeons all over the place, but they've never bugged me. Uh, they've never bugged me. So they come on my balcony. One of the things I always found interesting here, because like, we have screens here. We had screens at our last place. Uh, at all our places, that pretty much had screens. They're inside the window. It is a bit odd, because you got to move it. To, to open the window. Yeah. And my play, my bungalow in uh, in Copenhagen. Yeah, the same thing. Yeah, so I, I, and I asked. It's Jim effective. About, so I asked Jim about this. I was like, well, why why don't you put the screens on the outside, and then Ooh. the glass on the inside? So if you open the window, you never have to open the screen. Yeah. And she's like, we don't do that. Yeah. 
But what I will say is I liked it because I could actually like have the whole window open. Yeah. Because I mean, when the screen is on the outside, traditionally, yes, you can move them. Yeah. But it's never smooth. It's not like I actually liken it pretty much to uh, the sliding glass door scenario. Yeah. Right. Whereas again, it's on the outside, but that that screen moves very easily. Yeah. You know, and I and I like that. But I love. I mean, it's to, it's the, it's the world's biggest waste of electricity. Um, I have the windows open in my place. The aircon running. AC on. Oh. Because I like the fresh air, yeah. and I like the sound of like outdoors, birds, but, that sort of thing. you want cold weather? I don't want it too cold. I don't yeah. want it this friggin' cold. Yeah. Just so you know, the studio that I build, it's going to have a fucking heater in it. It's going to be a sauna in there. It's going to be great. Right? A nutsack is going to be like laying in the friggin' it's studio hot. chairs. So, how are you going to run the equipment? Doesn't matter. I'm going <laughs> to fucking outsource that. I'm going to buy telco gear so it can run at 110 friggin' Fahrenheit all day long. Just keep keep the switcher with the producer outside <laughs> and just run the mics yes. in. Yes. No, we'll hire some Thai guy to be like, oh my God, this is great. It's only 85 degrees in here. <laughs> I'm used to doing this in the middle of the field. He's wearing a jacket. We're both naked <laughs> yeah, sweating. Exactly. He's wearing Because he's got to cover the sun. He's got his sleeves rolled all the way down, you know, and he's He's cooler than we are. We're sitting here like, oh. That's another strange thing, right? You come over here and you think to yourself, okay, it's going to be hot as hell. So I'm going to wear shorts. And a short, tank top. Yeah, tank top. Get as much, you know. And you go outdoors. And then at the end of the day, you're like, why is my taxi cab driver? Or no, sorry. My, my motorbike taxi driver. Yeah. Wearing a jean jacket. He's wearing a jean jacket fully all the way down. He's got gloves on, yeah. potentially. Full headgear. Yeah. This is pre-COVID. So here's a strange thing. They tell you, P- ties will say, oh, the sun is strong today, mm-hmm. right? When I first moved here, I thought, like, it's just a goofy way to say it's hot. Yeah. Right? Like, it- it's lost in translation, yeah, exactly. right? It- sure. The sun is strong. It's hot. Yeah, it's hot out today. Yeah. And no, that's not what they mean. What they mean is that Bangkok is the closest possible <laughs> location on the earth to the sun, <laughs> and it is fucking strong, and it touches your skin, and it feels horrible. Yeah, it's like little needles. Yeah, and so I I go out, I wear, I often wear a long sleeve shirt, yeah. or I wear, a, a lot of times, because I'll wear like a, a dress, sh- like a short sleeve dress shirt with shorts, but I'll wear a long sleeve over shirt mm-hmm. over that to cover my arms, and if I ride a motorcycle, I oh, wear gloves. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I got buddies that come over here, and they're like, dude, like, I get it, San Diego. You know, it was a little colder, and obviously you're in IT. You yeah. work indoors. Why are you... I mean, I always, pretty much always, wear yeah. a long sleeve shirt. Yeah. I will roll up the sleeves yeah. and that sort of thing, but I always do this because, great example, I'm in Koh Phangan, and I ran a motorbike, yeah. and I'm going to drive around all day. Rolling down. All day long. Yeah, you can put on SPF, whatever, and then in like matter. 45 seconds later, it all sweats it off, yeah. you know? And so it's like, but yeah, you cover. And what's interesting is you don't get hotter. No. In fact, you're cooler covering cooler. yourself. Yeah. And so, so that that's about the fabric, right? So you have to wear uh, it's nat- true. natural fabric. If I had plastic, yeah, yeah, I would just like my jacket. Right, so if you're rocking day. polyester or yeah, like your, your body <laughs> condom. <laughs> I'm all excited, right, that I've got this friggin' foul weather gear, thinking I'm this awesome New Englander, and it's pouring rain outside. But of course, I can walk outside yeah. because it is raining. I'm going to stay dry. <laughs> so I got this full on this is like a full yellow like all the way down to the ankles I got this thing on I'm like awesome I get over here I'm gonna be so proud of myself I'm gonna take this off Jib is gonna be proud of me cause she's gonna be like oh my god this foreigner came over here walked in the rain stayed totally dry I take off this this basically so soaking like literally my entire first thing I say to her is oh my god this thing must have a leak in it <laughs> we're laughing how did I get all this water on me that like my shirt is drenched and they're like laughing at me yeah. going Dude, you're, you're sweating. It's 110 degrees outside. And you're wearing a rubber jacket. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh my fucking God. Full body condom, yeah, hood I, up. <laughs> <laughs> little fucking semen reservoir at the, t- at the tip. <laughs> I lost friggin' two kilos walking over here. <laughs> it's friggin' water weight, dude. Yeah. It's just like, you know, so important safety tip. Get something that breathes. Yeah. So you can, in a pinch, that's not bad. Like if you're stuck in a monsoon. Yeah, yeah for wh- sure. Whatever. Um, but yeah, they're they're breathable. Yeah, wet weather gear, umbrella. Get a good umbrella that's strong. I gotta get a good umbrella. Yeah. My umbrella is not good. It's not strong. The frame bends if there's wind. Yeah. Or buy like a hundred bot disposable umbrella, like one shot use. Pretty much, yeah. That's that. That's actually the kind of raincoat that I travel with now. Yeah. Just like I put it on once, and it's and it's so lame, and it's so one wear that when I do snap it in the front, yeah. If I were to try and unsnap it, it just rip. rips the fabric. So yeah. that's totally disposable. But yeah, they, I mean, it, it's a trade-off, right? Like, how often do you actually get stuck in the rain, you know, versus how often 
Here's the other thing too is that what I learned from because I asked Jim. I'm like, well, what do you do? She goes, I just get wet. Yeah. I'm like, what? She goes, yeah. I walk outside. My shirt gets a little wet, and then I come indoors, and it dries off. Yeah. Unlike your entire fucking shirt, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the, the water dripping down the back of your calf. <laughs> this is I got this, my damn jacket's leaking. I want my money back. This isn't. Fa- and, I want my thirty bot back. For this. <laughs> <laughs> and it just it didn't, didn't work. Now the umbrellas thing is interesting, and it, I think it probably works a lot better for people that are say you know Thai or Filipina. Yeah. They're short. Yeah. You and I walk around with an umbrella. Waist up, we're doing good all yeah. day long. Ankles? No, no, no go. Game over. Here's Knees down, so soaking rainy wet. season, you really have to you have to be ready to get your feet wet. It's a timing thing too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But also like every little section where there's not sidewalk oh, is going to flood. Yeah, for sure. Right? Like you get like understand that rainy season your shoes are going to get soaked mm-hmm. wear something you don't give a fuck if it gets wet wear something that's made to get wet like those beach shoes yeah exactly you know it, it makes cheap it sneakers whatever yeah, whatever like well no sneakers is all the foam in the sneaker right? yeah it's gonna get nasty that's true. no matter what yeah that's street water hepatitis galore so here's the thing about the hepatitis if you'll be you'll be you'll be sitting there and you'll be on the sidewalk and you'll see you know the lower part yeah it's flooding and you'll mm-hmm. think okay cool I'm gonna walk on this sidewalk where they have these beautifully designed squares of concrete <laughs> and when you step on it's gonna squirt hepatitis right up your leg straight up your leg <laughs> yeah. there is what because you think well god these seams are so tight yeah. they're so close together there's no there's no caulking there's no grout there's no like kind of you step on one of those, and it, what's going to happen is going to tilt sideways, yep. and it's going to come. Well, because what do they do? They're, they're not graded. There's no, no. Pack, there's no packed stone under no. there. Sand. Yes. What does sand do when it rains? <laughs> Erodes. <laughs> so you end up with this little... But the cool thing about it is... Y- your mobility is going to be great, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're freaking surfing on the side. But some for some reason, it's cool. Yeah. Why is that? Are we strange? We might be. I think we're freaking amaze balls. I think strange <laughs> up is top. up top. I think basically strange is synonymous with amaze balls. In <laughs> fact, if you were to look up amaze balls in Webster's dictionary, which just so we're clear, better fucking be there. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely is. Um, they're they're probably is synonymous. Yeah. with strange. Absolutely. Yeah, and then it'd be our picture. Yeah, be pretty much next to each other, going like Boom. this. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I think that we should probably have a minimum of seven of those every podcast. Sounds like a good idea. Seven high fives. I- I- integrate. So let's Let's get, make sure we're up boom. To, there we go. Uh, up oh, to, wow, up to I, stuff there. I just over modulated. Yeah, you just straight blue. <laughs> you just straight blue. Oh <laughs> my god, dude! I just slammed right past. Look at me. I don't even know my own strength. <laughs> so yeah, there's some strange things, but rainy season's an interesting one. And once you've gone through your first rainy season here. You're good. You know what? That's a great point because I thought, okay, what's rainy season going to be like? Mm. You know, everyone's like, oh, I'm just going to be better. And again, we grew up in New England, yeah. So I mean, there's thunderstorms and that sort of. It's not anything like this no. but it's at least a trajectory in the right direction because yes. when i came from san diego the rain there is it's non-committal it's, it's bitch rain it's bitch rain it's yep. freaking annoying there's it's, it's just like so oh my god did some like, jackass leave his we- irrigation drizzle? On? Yeah. it's drizzle yeah. it's freaking drizzle and you can't really do anything because you're going to get wet and then of course the streets because it's southern california have mm. been dry for the last 90 days yeah. thin film of oil All water yeah tsh, ridiculous so over here it rains for five yeah. minutes. Yeah. There's a well outside. Yes. You're golden. So here, here's the thing, right? It, it rains hard. It mm. rains heavy during yeah. rainy season. Once you understand how to navigate rainy season mm. you know, as, as a Bangkokian, yeah. you, you're good, right? Is and it that, Cockian? Bangkokian. I'm, I mean, I'm not, I don't know if I'm feeling real cocky, but I mean, I'm okay yeah, with yeah, it. You're, you're almost Bangkokian. Couple, Fair enough. A couple more months we'll be able yep. to call you Bangkokian. Full year. Fair enough. So, but once you learn how to navigate, Especially if you're a BTS dweller like Mike and I, mm. MRT dweller, like you know, like hey, look, the bottom of this stairway is going to be flooded when it rains, so I gotta, you know, going out. My boy Ben, we call him Mexican Ben, even though he's Thai, he looks Mexican. <laughs> um, he he drives his scooter. He he owns a construction company. Okay, he has like twelve crews working for him. Jesus, all over the city. Good for him. Yeah, awesome guy. Yeah, right. And so he drives his scooter between sites all day long. He's got like one of those big, like uh, bigger than a PCX type of scooter, like a big cruiser scooter. Oh, like feet way up kind of thing. And him. No, yeah, like like the platform on the bottom. Oh, He's got, okay. He can fit like two days worth of groceries in that fucker. <laughs> His whole family's on there. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, but he can go. He goes all around the city, and so rainy season, like 
he just he's he's out there riding. Yeah. Doing it up. You got to get used to it, man. I mean, that's the thing. You got to make it happen. Here's the other thing, too, is that if you're on the BTS, you're over here, and what I discovered is it starts raining like crazy. Yeah. Just hang out on the BTS platform after you get off the train. Yeah. Because you can buy ice yeah. cream. Drinks. Pharmacy. Yeah. Get your nails. I mean, you know, get right, a haircut. Yeah. Get a haircut. You could get. Uh, you couldn't necessarily get groceries. I mean, every now and then, it's not a Watson. Well, so no. So but, those are the MRTs, right? The, no, 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 no. Oh yeah, yeah. The MRT. They got a full mall. There's underneath. like a mall underneath. What do they call those? Um, you know the one like when you're cruising. Okay, so from Pala, mm -hmm. you go downstairs, and then obviously you got to take those other stairs. Yeah. If you take that first super sharp left, and you go into that hallway that goes into a mall. Yeah. It's called something, and it's in the, the bottom of many MRTs. Oh yeah, it's like it's, um, it's not central something, but no, it's, it's like that. It's like a subterranean little alley mall. Yeah, yeah. but then there, I mean, it's food court. Like half of the MRTs have that. Yeah, like the one right outside of Fortune Town, yeah. for example. That's a huge one. Yes, if you go underneath, because you're going from that MRT stop to no, so it's at the, you go from Fortune Town through the MRT station to Central Roman Nine. Yes. Now, but yeah, that's like a whole little mall under there. Yeah, yeah. crazy. Yeah, he, underneath the street. The one, the one at Aso has like an Aunt Annie's pretzel. Yeah, it's not has that a different. bakery. Right, right, has right. Has like two barber shops. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, shocker, I didn't know that. I mean, yeah. don't, don't really seek those out, I guess anymore. But yeah, well, like, you went once and look what happened. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, <laughs> like that shampoo was pretty effective. Doesn't seem like I, you just kind of blew your lifetime value yeah, of this client. I'm, I'm getting there. Yeah, I'm getting there. I'm uh, getting with there. those headphones on, you yeah. look you look quite Mike. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. Good, although the facial hair, I mean, was that? That's three days sign. growth you got going yeah, on there, so right? Yeah, I shaved this morning. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. good for you. That's the <laughs> testosterone you got flowing through your body. You gotta right get there. on that uh, that Tony Huge TRT. I mean, anything that relates to huge. Yeah. Obviously, I want to do it. You know? He gave me some of his supplements when we hung out last time. And so what specific ones, though? I mean, they weren't. He's, he didn't give you testosterone. No, he gave me growth hormone. <laughs> for your cock? Or for, <laughs> Just growth hormone in general. Oh, to bulk up yeah. kind of thing? Yeah. But, I mean, how many did he give you? I mean, is that the a point? bottle. That's like, I, I, I love the people. I mean, at Costco, right? You know, at Costco, the yeah. standard thing. You go in on a Saturday, you can basically have lunch the whole day because there's so many samples yeah. of everything. Okay, yeah. Would you like these potato chips? Yes. And then I love when I'm in the vitamin aisle. And they're like, oh, yeah, we want to try some of this vitamin C? Yeah. Take, take one vitamin C. Because instantaneously, I'm going to be healthy. I mean, what the well, fuck he gave is me like a, I, guess, I guess a month's supply, one bottle. Really? Yeah. Now is this because he was talking about his new blend kind of thing? It you was think like this was... his formulation. Yeah. Okay. And it's like, and? It, it's got the. I haven't tried it. I was going to say, are mm -hmm. you a little reluctant? Or are you like, well, you know what? Tony's a pretty normal guy. Well, I've got I've got to research what it is. I don't know what it. I don't just take what people give me. Fair. Probably wise move. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I've, I've tried that before. It didn't work out so well. Yeah. Me too. Otherwise, you <laughs> might end up going to the same meetings I do <laughs> on a regular basis just to maintain. <laughs> but yeah. So. Uh, no, he, but he hooked me up. I'm grateful, right? Yeah, He's yeah, like, yeah. cool dude. Um, but yeah, it was like, I, I got to look at what's in it mm -hmm. and like figure out. But eh. I mean, dude, he goes to the gym every single day. A couple times a day. Yeah. So, I mean, if a guy like that gives me something that says, oh, Mike, this is really going to help you bulk up. Yeah. I'm like, bro, you're pissing through 3,500 calories a day. Yeah. If Easy. I ingest one third of that, I gain weight. So he's, I do he, this for He's going living. through like 3,500 calories a day and he's banging like 12 women a day. So yeah. 12. And, people a day and a lot of times rose <laughs> is videotaping this entire yeah, thing yeah. i mean she is like engaged there <laughs> rose man if you guys don't know what we're talking about thank god there are cards in yeah. youtube because we can link right yeah. to this freaking so, video yeah. tony huge interview four four and a half hours of strange either that or just go to our channel and type in the word lady boy lady boy although did you do any sort of lady boy discussions when woody was around or is that a little mm, bit too risque for no, him but woody's Woody's a uh, little bit uh, not not uh, not into the lady boy discussions. Fair enough. He's very he, he Woody's very much about being safely on the right side of the line. Okay, that's fine. I mean, that's good. Where, whereas I'm I'm, I'm very much about eh, if no, I step dude. both feet over, I'm good. Here's the deal, dude. Here's the line. Here's you and me. Yeah, fucking all exactly. day long. All Up day. top, baby. Boom. Did, I, did I peek again? I think I just yeah, peeked. Yeah, blew it out. Look at me. God damn it. <laughs> I am so friggin' important. So after we do this BTS thing, and again, that's going to be kind of a rolling thing. Yeah. We're going to have to go out and we're going to have to do several because obviously there's going to be times when like I'm away, yep. you're away, we're both not, so that we can, you know, have those sort of in the can, in as the they bank. say. Yeah. But we need to have like a series. And if we miss one, then it would be a little bit odd. Yeah. Our thinking initially is north to south. 
Correct. Right? Yep. Yeah. So, so that'll start be... up at Watt, whatever it is now. And that is so ridiculously far away from where a lot of tourists would go. Yeah. It's going to be very non-Bangkok. So it'll be interesting. Like, as we get closer and closer to Tourist Central, yeah. you know, it might even be more difficult for us. Yeah. Because we're going to have to find... We're not going to go to Nana Plaza. Yeah. We're going to go to Terminal 21. Who Sci- fucking cares? Siam Square. What are we going to do? Jesus Christ. Well, I tell you what we're going to do is we're going to walk all over the platforms there. Yeah. Because there is an entire city at BTS level. Correct. That is just amazing. And you cannot see it from on the, from when you're in the BTS. Yeah. You have to exit and go down one level. Yeah. And then you're like, they built an entire street. Yeah. Like it's this giant sidewalk. I mean, I don't know how much something like that costs. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, did BTS pay for it? Probably. Yeah. There's also, you know, one of the other things, like when you're at Siam or like Chitlom, like all these places that are kind of like, oh, but you know, like Chitlom, Planchet, not far from Lupini. Either, yeah, right, right, sure. So you can get, get down to there. But also like Siam, there's all this other stuff around Siam because, you know, like El Sewing Studio at mm-hmm. Siam. Yeah. In Siam Square, but you would never know. No, no, no. Scala Theater, which like a lot of people didn't even know about, like right. used to be my favorite theater. And then there's all these other shops. Like my optometrist is down there. I think that's going to be the key, right? In other words, everyone knows. Okay, a sulk. What do I do at a sulk? Yeah. Okay, you go to the right and you go to Terminal Twenty One. What do I do at Prom Pong? Yeah. So EM Quartier, <laughs> or I go at right. So so there's a, a hidden food court at Siam that will show people. Oh, big time! Yeah. I can't wait for that. We actually, I will tell you that after coming here six or seven years, yes, I checked out the food court in Terminal Twenty One. Yeah. But it wasn't until I went there with a local. Yeah. Where I was like, oh, there's like more of it. Yeah. It, because it's quite large. Terminal Twenty One food court's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. As far as food courts it's go. Cheap. If you guys... For shopping mall food, right? It's cheap, and it's legit Thai food. It is legit Thai food, yeah. and that's another thing, too, because if you and I were back home, like, especially in New England, right, very content- Sabaros. And you say to yourself, you say to one of your buddies, yeah, so I took this girl on a first date, and we went to the food court At in terminal, the mall. Yeah. Loser. Right? You do that with a Thai girl here? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. A little baller. It's like, wow, you don't want to eat off the street? I mean, it's going to be the same quality food, but we get to sit down? Yeah. Jesus Christ. This guy's full on. Yeah. Making it rain, big time, dude. Next thing you know, I'm gonna go to take to take it to the movies, and we're gonna rent a couch. Yeah, get a free blanket for half the price of one ticket in America. Popcorn for three bucks. Customer service. Yeah, you guys, you go to the one where it's got the button. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, you okay? Yeah, so you press the button, right? And it lights up, and they come out. Waiter, yeah, take comes. your order. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've seen that here. I, mm-hmm. uh, usually, like I said, we used to go to Scala. Thirty, yeah. bought, thirty bought popcorn. And uh, like 15 bot cans of soda. I will say that the movie theaters that we're talking about, i.e. the luxury ones, in yeah. air quotes, um, I mean, the, the price of popcorn there is kind of ridiculous. It's not United States ridiculous. Yeah, but it's still up there. Considering what popcorn costs to make. Yeah. And the price of the <laughs> ticket. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's a little... But like... You, for, you could pay for popcorn what you pay for a ticket. In fact, I think that is the price of it. I think yeah. maybe that's what... I mean, it includes a drink. That's Terminal sort of 21, it's 150 bot for the large popcorn. The ticket is 170. Well, on Wednesdays, right? Yeah. And then, or, or no, is it the same price every day there? No, Wednesday. Every almost everywhere in Thailand, Wednesdays are cheaper. Okay, yeah. yeah. You know the place. So we're familiar with AISDC, which yeah. if you guys know. Oh, here's the other thing too. Did you know? Because are you an AIS guy? Yeah. You're okay. Oh no, I don't have the AIS phone. But I'm a member of AIS. Ah, okay. Right. I was gonna say because they have six months free Netflix Premium. Wow. It's pretty sweet, right? That's sweet. Yeah. Not only are there no ads, but here's the beauty of it. You ever watch Netflix on your phone and you're somewhere and you want to just like, you know, to say battery, yeah. you shut it off. Yeah. The minute you shut it off, you lose Netflix. Yeah. This now plays in the background oh. and I can download anything. Wait, wait, so wait, I pay for Netflix. So how is that different than... I'm sorry, sorry. Did I say Netflix? Um, I meant YouTube, uh, YouTube Premium. Oh, okay. Sorry, 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 sorry. Of course I buy Netflix. I mean, we all own Netflix. Actually, I'm, wait, I'm waiting for Disney Disney Plus to come to Thailand. So, yeah, I'm not a big Disney need. There's not a big Disney need. I will say... I'm a big Star Wars and Marvel guy. Okay, that I get that. Yeah. I get that. Um, so with my AIS home plan... Um, no, phone plan... I did get Netflix free for 30 days. Okay. Yeah, so that was pretty good. But yeah, so YouTube Premium with AIS is, okay. is what I was talking what about. What does that cost normally? That's a great question. I want to say like five, six bucks a month. Because I, I told you, I, was, I just upgraded my iCloud. Yeah. And in Thailand, it's mm. like a tenth the price of the US. And you, so you got what, 200 gigs total? How much is it per month? $3.99 baht. Wow. 
That's a pretty good deal. Two terabytes is ten dollars. Three a three, month. Three forty nine. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually about the same price. I mean, my my Dropbox is ninety nine bucks a year, two terabytes. No, but I think iCloud in the U S. is like fifty dollars a month. Fifty dollars? Something like that. Yeah. Six hundred dollars a year? I don't know, dude. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. I, my phone is filming us right now, so I can't. Ah, son of a bitch! I know you probably left yours downstairs. But I did leave mine downstairs. I didn't really want. You know, I mean, I don't want to impress you by googling something. You know, what I mean, because if, if I need it, I'll bang it. If you bang it, I'll bang it. <laughs> Yahoo I, it. Yeah, I might have to go to Yahoo. I'll just and, ask Jeeves. I, you know, I mean, look at it. Dogpile is. There's a lot to be said for Dogpile. <laughs> I could web crawl it. I could crawl it if I had to. I mean, either. The, and if I really want to go back, well, then Wayback Machine. Go for it. Gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> From the command line? <laughs> Jesus. How cool are we? How much female audience do we have now? Right, A uh, uh, bunch of wet panties out there listening to this Jesus. episode. This He's going to go for it. Drop into the floor. <laughs> I want to have these guys for my friggin' next Chippendales audition. Go for it. God <laughs> damn. What if you could still go for it? Oh, yeah. I mean, all those commands still exist yeah. in Unix. Yeah, but does the, the infrastructure to, to pull the information still exist? I think it does because all it is is querying something of finite amount based yeah. on the data that's out there. But that's a good question. Like I don't know if you can um uh what was it? finger. Yeah, finger. Right? I don't know if you can like <laughs> finger somebody. They'd be like, dude, just use ping. Like ping's been around for you don't need to finger somebody. But anyway. All right. Well that's not run, strange. Run some trace route. That's just that's just basically letting everyone know that thank God we already have girlfriends because otherwise we would not be getting laid. Yeah, definitely not. Uh, definitely yeah. not. normal women in our life would just be what the fuck. Well when I can make math jokes and Jib gets it, like Trust me. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's unique. So that is Gracie's in a different uh sort of uh uh, history, right? Yeah. Her, her her history is just a little bit different. I mean, definitely yeah. grew up on a farm, but worked in a very high tourist area, yeah. you know, so became very street smart without mm. becoming brash or like yeah. cold or edgy. Or she hasn't knifed anyone yet. No, I mean, she's she's ridiculously female, yeah. which is lovely, right? I mean, that's the other thing that might, you might find strange. You leave the United States, you come over here. <laughs> women are nice. They're women. <laughs> no, I, they expect th us th to be th men. There are nice women in the U.S. I don't want to say all are bad. No, but, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. But there are enough. Yeah. Where like coming over here and finding someone as a mate. Yeah. It's just like pretty goddamn refreshing. Yes. Let's face it. You know, dating here is definitely, and also in Thailand in particular, uh, the, I, I believe this is, is a lot more uh, women than men. Yeah, yeah, just in the society, and, sure, and, so, and also in Bangkok. Yeah, and so in Bangkok specifically, mm -hmm. so like you're kind of it's fish in a barrel almost. Yeah, I mean, well, it's, it's fish in a barrel in the Philippines, especially yeah. as a foreigner. Yeah, and uh, but you know, it was I was talking to Jib. I think you were actually in the room, but you might have been doing something else. And she said something to like the effect of because I'm walking back to the BTS and it's mm -hmm. at nighttime. She says to me, she says, "Okay, well, watch. You know, you want to take a you know the big red kind of thing." I said, like, "No, no, no, I'm going to walk. It's no big deal." She goes, "Oh, dangerous." I said, "Yeah, yeah, I know. There's no sidewalk, but I mean, I can I walk it, oncoming yeah. traffic and I want to." And I said, "Well, don't you ever do that?" She goes, "No, no, no, I don't do that because someone's going to like hit me, pull over, you know, and then they'll just drive away." Yeah. And I'm like, "What?" I said, "You think they're going to do that to me?" And she goes, "Oh, no, 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 you're a foreigner." I'm like, "What?" She goes, "No, they'll be less likely to do that to you." It's expensive. Yes. Maybe you were listening or did you just know that? No, you told me this. Oh, I told you this already? <laughs> but I mean, is that right? I mean, but but she's Thai, well educated. So it's not like yeah. she's like, oh yeah, me and all my girlfriends that work at this pool hall. No, no, no. She's got a freaking master's yeah, degree. Yeah, but you look at her, she, you don't know. No, I get that. But my point is that her description of this yeah. seemed really almost like, I was like, oh, wow, I didn't really think that that still occurred. Yeah. You know? And well, she's like, I, oh, and I say, okay, so you look at me like, what do you see? She's like, you're wealthy. No, I mean, that's definitely... What? So, you don't have dreadlocks as a white dude. Yeah. You're not wearing elephant pants. <laughs> you're idiot. Not, you're not, idiot, <laughs> pants, idiot pants, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you're, not, you're not wearing a Chong t-shirt. Right, yeah, totally. So, I mean, there's a look, right? Okay, like, fair enough. So, you see someone wearing a button-up shirt, mm. you know... Right. You know, well put together, like, clean... Sweating like a pig underneath his fucking sweating raincoat. Sweating like a pig under his, his body condom. <laughs> but, I mean, like, you like, yeah. not not a shit bag, yeah, digital right. nomad, right. drop shipper from Shang <laughs> Um No stereotypes, but no stereotypes. Jesus Christ. He's showered because I can't smell yeah, him from here. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's so, so, he's not Indian. So probably. <laughs> Racism through the roof. Up top. Yeah. <laughs> 
So no audience potential there. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I just I just alienated 1.7 billion people. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Thanks. <laughs> that got this Chinese out there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll alienate them in the next episode. <laughs> ah, give it time. So, but you know, they'll look at you and they'll say, "Oh, it's definitely like you know, not like your average Franquino." You know, and uh, Farankino. Farankino? Bird shit guava farang. Really? Yeah. That's the literal translation, yeah. of course. Yeah, because I know bird farang shit, bird is... Bird shit guava, yeah. yeah. okay. So it's like the, the... It's basically when the birds eat the seeds out of the guava, then and they then shit they them. Got it. And then it becomes a guava tree. It's a farankino. Which is someone who lives in Chiang Mai and dropships. <laughs> dropships. <laughs> <laughs> and then sells a class about dropship success. Oh, I love that. You know, I, I I made so many millions, but I tell you what, what really pleases me is teaching all of you how to do it for only $47. Yes. <laughs> right. You made millions, and now your income stream is $47 chunks of time. And, and you filmed it in your 2000 bottom month apartment You're in Chiang Mai. Broke. <laughs> Friggin' broke. <laughs> on your on your Samsung Galaxy 1. I will say the majority of those losers, as we're describing them right now, they all seem to own Macs. Yeah, well, that's what they spent all their money on. Because I'm not going to spend, what is it, 60,000 baht? Uh, this was like 90. Oh, my fucking God. I mean, again, that's how much my Mac was in the U.S., three grand. Yeah. Forget it, dude. Same price here. Yeah. Speaking of which, actually, we're going to be having an episode drop, which is going to be you yep. helping me go yes. buy a new laptop. Right. And that'll be a vlog. So oh, they'll, yeah. They'll okay. be on the YouTube channel. Hold on a minute, though. Are we going to do that? Because I need one. Yeah. We were going to do it to Tuesday. Tuesday. After the, we do the live stream. Yep. But you don't have the GoPro yet. Do it comes you? tomorrow. Really? Yeah. What, did, did you get like four day shipping? It's, it's oh, it's GoPro.com. Yeah, so. yeah. So you're going to pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Okay. And it's the GoPro 9, right? Hero 9 Black <sighs> with the media mod. Dude. Yeah. Giant. See, I mean, it, it, it's got such great stabilization electronically. You don't even need a the, gimbal. It, it do you? does voodoo shit. Like this, this camera does like voodoo. You could like, ser like I could be three, three and ones in. So yeah, holding this thing. Yeah. Don't need a gimbal. Don't need a gimbal. Um, the only Jesus. thing I, I wasn't able to get the uh, ND filters for uh, for like shooting outside. So if you want to be able to slow your shutter down and, and oh, neutral okay, density yeah, yeah. filter. It, it, it darkens the lens. We gonna do sixty frames a second on that? Oh, you can, but no, I'll shoot in twenty four. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's seven twenty, right? Motion for blur. No, no. You'll do. I'll shoot. I'll shoot it in four K. Really? Actually, I'll probably shoot it in five K twenty four, and then Ooh. and then I'll. Well, I think four K is better with the stabilization, but no, that I, makes I, sense. For, yeah. for for YouTube, I like four K. Mm -hmm. Um, but it shoots five K. Okay. And uh, Jesus. But, so th it's got this feature. It has. It comes with a. It, you can buy a lens mod that's not available yet. It's a 155 degree angle view. Okay. And so it's got a feature built into the camera called horizon stabilization. Okay. Or horizon leveling. Okay. So you can rotate the camera and it keeps the horizon level digitally. But now okay. I'll when we finish here, we're going to I'll show you a video. Yeah. When you shoot on the, uh, with this lens. Right. You can spin the camera 360 and the horizon stays level. It's voodoo. I mean, it is fucking voodoo. Electronically, it electrically, it makes sense to me because all you have to do, I mean, it's got probably three gyroscopes in it, right? More than that, but they, yeah, true. They, they put a video up in the sample. And you're going no, where the guy is. He's in a plane. Mm, mm, right, oh, flying, got it. And, it and you can see the horizon behind he, him. Yeah, and he barrel rolls, and the horizon never moves. See, now I don't. I can understand why that might be kind of cool, you know, for a little bit of this. But a full tilt, like if you're moving the camera in that motion, yeah, you would think you would want to change your view so perspective. It, it's for making a. So it's like if you have a subject, yeah, the subject stays upright yep or the subject flips but the horizon stays correct oh so the background stays the same but the foreground thing goes with the camera yeah so the guy is in the plane he does a 360 interesting and the horizon never moves all right that'll so be... they put that video out like maybe five days before the camera dropped and me and my buddy uh josh yeah. suburban bear yeah, right. we're chatting i'm like what the fuck is that is, like, possible. is it a new How? feature is it yeah. a new accessory it's fucking voodoo and this thing was what 400 500 600 600 Two, uh no 350 Three fifty. Like if you you have to subscribe to the GoPro thing for like a year and that's included. Okay. Because they want you to have the subscription. All right. But yeah, I think it's normally like four ninety nine, but it was like three fifty or three hundred, but two ninety nine. Wow. Yeah. So like, and so 
it will come here. It will be full price. Mm -hmm. So I say even paying for shipping, I yeah. saved like a stupid amount of money. So they're just they're just I mean, literally day one, they're available and they're discounting them already. Yeah. So yeah, Crazy. But they want what it is they want you to sign up for that that month long YouTube so or that year long YouTube subscription. They're looking long term. This yeah. guy's going to be using it. Now, like, when do they come up with new models annually? So, yeah, this, it's Funny story. I bought the eight, the GoPro eight, a year oh, ago. Oh, this still hasn't shook because of the Mexican so, delivery. So what happened was my buddy Josh was supposed to come here, right? And uh, it didn't work out. He couldn't make it here for uh, January, and so he hung on to it. And uh, I didn't want to just ship it because I'll get fucked with duties. Like yeah. If he just sends, I'll get fucked with duties and shit. So my Eric's brother okay. came to visit. Yeah. Josh shipped it to Eric's brother. USPS oh, yeah. <laughs> delivered it two hours after he, he left, left for the slide. airport. Yeah. So he got so. back home. He shipped it to my buddy, uh, Greg Magonj, who's uh, he lives in Chiang Mai, but he's okay. living, he was home in Arizona when COVID hit. Mm -hmm. So he got stuck in Arizona. So can't come back yet. So yeah, he shipped it to Greg, who <clears throat> now Greg is in Mexico waiting. He's trying to get that new 90 day uh, yeah. visa Special thing. Special tourist visa. So he's waiting on that. Okay. And so he's got my GoPro and a few other things for me as well. <laughs> But you don't need it anymore. Cause so, well, what do you so, have? Do you have a you, seven? I have a seven. <laughs> it's up here. What? Okay. Well, how many of those? Do you have it like since the beginning? Yeah. Like do you have a three, a four, a five, a six, a seven? I think I've got I've got a three, a five, and the seven. We're gonna have to take some cameras out on the. Uh, and and you got this baby. And I've got a uh, which is nice. This is my Y four K. It's actually a nice little camera too. Yeah. No. Totally. The 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 Chinese ones. I have the. Um, I've got these little lights. SJ cam. For, SJ cam sure works pretty well. Blow out my lens. Is this a uh, is this a ceremonic? No, that's a, a road. road. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Nice. All right, we'll get. Anyway, we're going to be using all this stuff when we do the BTS. Hey, here's the eight. Oh, it's in there. It's okay. In this one, yeah. So this is the eight. Yeah. So what? Or no, this is the seven. So what yeah, I think yeah, we'll yeah. do is like uh, the the nine comes. I got the media mod with it, so it has a mic built in. Okay. It's a much small, and it's got a front camera, so you can frame. Oh, gee, and a back. No, you mean a front uh, display? A front display. Yeah, yeah. A, a color front display, color back display. It's a little bit bigger than this. Amazing. But I don't need this adapter because it has a microphone mod that you can add on to it. Okay. So. I'll use that for like all the vlog stuff. Maybe I'll have you carry the seven. To yeah, no, we should totally stuff. do both. I mean, if nothing, to B roll while we're doing it. I mean, the editing will be a bitch, but we got to figure out. We got to outsource all that. And then, anyway. when, then when the when the uh, when the eight arrives, we'll have a <laughs> third we'll just one. Be carrying two or three cameras. Well, walking. I, I think the nice thing is like we'll shoot the majority. And plus, I've got the Fuji film, and mm -hmm. I've got the the two Canons. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Right? So well, like, that'd be great quality. Yeah, and so we'll always be able to shoot like B roll stuff like that. When you gonna get a what? We are way off topic, yeah. which is fucking awesome just <laughs> actually how far up top. I'm up top. we're like at 130 in i mean do we want to just let, let i'll tell you what let's just do this let's keep it to the strange that we've it, done so yes. far we've obviously teased what we got coming up with yep. the bts as well as all the other strange in bangkok and i think we talked about doing maybe street food in the malls as well we definitely got to do that but i mean again it's going to be the majority of what we're going to be doing yeah. is non-tourist yes so you know with that coming yeah, up we're not we're not doing street food from like talad rot we're, we're going to be going to like these little like local spots yeah for sure like the fried chicken guy in front of seven Allowed. Yes, who's freaking epic. I'm probably going to grab some on my way home. Probably, I, I would argue, um, you know, Thailand's fried chicken is probably best in the world. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because here's the thing, and it's not just like the guy in front of 7-Eleven. Every guy in front of every 7-Eleven. And every fried chick. Well, you know what's funny? The lady who I buy fried chicken from, yeah. guess where she puts her cart? In front of 7-Eleven. Absolutely. <laughs> Gets it amazing. Yeah. Just, that's the other strange thing. You put a cart in front of 7-Eleven in the United States. What the hell? You're not paying permit. Get the hell Get out of here. So, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Here, it's like you walk up to the... Sometimes you can't even see the goddamn door. Mm. Like if you're oh, 101, where yeah. I'm at, you like walk... The, unless the sign was up there, I'd have no idea. Yeah. Because from the sidewalk into the door of the 7-Eleven, there's like a lady with a sewing machine. There's groceries. Yeah. There's like... I mean, it's just awesome. So yeah. much available. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, we, 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 I think we double-clicked on Strange. I believe we have. All right. All right, so, guys, until next time, stay strange. Peace. Peace.